So, that, again, another very strong lineup, and even though they haven't been too good head to head as the two teams make their way out onto the field, today they will expect to be quite strong and uh, a good contest for this Burundara team. Absolutely, and you mentioned it, Teo. There's those key players. Chill is just a rock, and she's a star for them. Um, and Brittany Dudley Smith, what a great pickup. Um, she's got 19 goals, one in the final series, and when you've lost someone like Laura Sporanovic, having another quality forward to complement the enigma and talent that is Tiffany Eliadis, it just adds another dimension to their side. So, yeah, they've got some quality, but it's going to be an interesting uh, lineup. Teams are lining up for the national anthem. We'll take this as best we can. So, uh, if you stand with us at home, it's time for the Australian national anthem ahead of the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final 2015. Two teams lined up and ready to play it. South Melbourne in the blue up against the Burundara Eagles in the purple with black shorts and white socks. And hello to everyone watching exclusively on FFV Team App this afternoon. Time to get some predictions. Cheryl Downs on the sidelines. Who's going to win and why? Look, I think Burundara are really heading out there with all the class that they've taken through the season. They've got some amazing players that no one's been able to break down to this point. So I think that they will take it out, to be honest. But I think South Melbourne have got some class of their own. So I'm just hoping for a great match. And Anna Harrington, your thoughts? Who's going to win and why? I think Burundara will win. Um, I think it'll be tough to get the first goal, but from there, I think Burundara's class will really win out. And I'm tipping 3-0 is my All right. prediction. Well, the last two grand finals were decided by a solitary goal. South Melbourne defeated 1-0 by Sandringham in 2013 and beating Heidelberg United 1-0 in 2014. Burundara almost ready to go. Both teams are going to form their huddles. Today's referee is Daniel Anderson, the FFV Female Referee of the Year, and the fourth official, Kate Jakovic, who is a W League regular. So great reward for an all-female crew, Anna Harrington, and also the Victorian Referee of the Year, rightly get, being given the whistle in the biggest match of the season. Absolutely. Who else are you going to give it to? Um, she's earned the right. And, yeah, as you said, fantastic to see a quality all-female panel um, refereeing today's game. Um, you know, it's the best of female football and it should be the best of refereeing as well. So uh, looking forward to uh, well, not hearing too much about the rest at all. So the conditions, we know they were a factor in 2013. South Melbourne uh, unable to deal with a high bouncing ball on the synthetic that led to the only goal that decided that match. Do you think that could be a factor today? Or uh, I understand coming in that Burundara, of course, knocks their home ground is synthetic, whereas South Melbourne have played nine games total on synthetic pitches this season. So even though their home is Lakeside Stadium, which is grass, it's not like synthetic is a total shock to them, given they've played nine matches on these sort of surfaces throughout the year. Well, exactly. And they won't want to use this excuse in any way you'd say that you must take that as a learning experience from a couple of years ago and they've played enough on synthetic now um, you know you come here and you play against Bulleen at the Veneto at the Veneto club so you're used to it and at the end of the day you can only play with what conditions are there and it's still an unfamiliar ground for Borondara as well so yeah it should be absolute cracker the two captains two of the the biggest and brightest personalities in the WPL Alex Gummer who signed for Adelaide United in the W League during the week, and Alex Cheel, the, the girl from Echuca, who, well, to me, it's a little bit of a surprise that she's not in a W League team, but uh, maybe again today, uh, a starring performance at centre back on the big stage can put her name up in lights. But they really are two dynamic leaders, and when the chips are down, uh, and perhaps, you know, when expectations aren't being met, they're the two voices that will be the loudest out there on the pitch today. Oh, I almost expect to hear them from our position up in the stands, Tao. They really know how to rev up their team. Uh, we've, had, we've been lucky enough to have Alex Gummer. Uh, join us in the team before and we've interviewed Alex Chill a number of times. They're both big dynamic personalities, 
Now you can imagine they'll be doing absolutely everything to fire their respective sides up and wheel them over the line. Um, they're fantastic leaders and a real credit to the WPL. Fans coming in late here, free entry today, so we were always expecting a good crowd. And they're steadily filling around the ground. We're actually filming from the grandstand side today, so you can't see the majority of the fans here at the Venado Club. It's going to be South Melbourne in the blue, kicking off, attacking the creek end, while Burundara Eagles in purple will be attacking the tennis court's end. For those of you familiar with the ground, this is it, the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final for 2015. Burundara Eagles versus South Melbourne, all in readiness to get this one underway. Your commentary team this afternoon, Cheryl Downs, Anna Harrington and myself, Teo Pelizzeri. We're all waiting on the referee's whistle here. And with the ball steady in the centre, a little false start on kickoff, but that gets us underway. And it's South Melbourne looking to go back to back up against a Burundara side, trying to complete what would, all things considered, be a perfect season, a clean sweep. And early, a stumble from Cheel allows Boudreau to come in and win the ball on the right. Has she got anyone in the middle? Newman is lurking at the back post, but that cross lands on the roof of the net, and early nerves settled there for the South Melbourne defence. The last thing they wanted to do was cough the ball up to Terin Boudreau, who's really terrorised South Melbourne in the two home-and-away meetings between the sides this year. Yeah, there's not many teams she doesn't terrorise. She's a super player at this level, and look, she's just uh, worrying land a little bit there. Plenty of pressure just on the edge of the box. Um, but just working their way out of trouble here, South Melbourne. A few early nerves. A couple of shallow passes, nearly coming unstuck, but Farquhar now will move the ball down the left. 1-2 with Eliadis, and Safri Lyons makes a run, and now slides it through to Baker, and they've got just a bit of a look here. Dudley Smith into the area, and it's an early chance for South Melbourne. Good slide challenge coming in, and the offside flag was up in any case, but Gummer was able to slide in and take the ball off Dudley Smith's boot and South Melbourne showing what they can do, breaking down the left there and Farquhar was the one who got it started. Yeah, just a little bit of a nervous moment there for Sky Jensen. She, you wouldn't see uh, that too often from the Borondara defence. We've seen both teams just have a couple of nervous moments, a couple of loose touches and that's to be expected with grand final nerves. But Taryn Boudreau is again just causing havoc and she's going to run all the way up to land and create the pressure as she knocks the ball. Land putting Chill under the pump and now Howes comes deep to get the ball. We'll go down to Cheryl in a moment just to get a, an update on how it looks from pitch level. Here's a long ball over the top looking for Baker, but Tay has got that one covered. Plays it back to Anna Lanning, who's going to ditch the, the goalie gloves and become a cricketer over the course of the summer. We'll probably see her in the women's big bash. Anna. Yeah, we're seeing a line-up alongside her sister for Melbourne Stars, I believe. Um, talented all-rounder in her own right, Anna Lanning, I believe. So, ball out from the centre of defence by Tay. Headed away by Baker. Lines challenging Tay, who just got clipped on the ankle there, and no foul, whistled by the referee. Burundara retaining possession. Gummer breaking down the left, trying to find some space, and it's been knocked into touch. Taken quickly, tracking it back for South Melbourne is Pritchard, and now has her pocket picked by Boudreau. South Melbourne defence on alert. Boudreau playing it back, can't find a teammate. Baker able to make amends. Howes comes in and wins the ball. Now Pollock. Keeps it moving up to Eliadis, overhit ball. And Olivia Ellis knows this ground well, played for Bullen uh, Bull Lions, of course, here last season. And now a foul going the way of Rani Cavaretta in a dangerous position. Cheryl, we'll throw it down to you. Your impressions on the first couple of minutes of this match so far. Yeah, I think, like you said, there are perhaps a little bit of nerves from both teams in that they've allowed players to get in deeper than they would have liked. But what I've seen from ground level is that both teams really seem to be picking up the pace of the turf on the synthetic field that we've got here. Beautiful ball through before from South Melbourne. Here comes Melbourne, the free kick from waiting. Jackson to the back post. Header on goal and it's in 1-0. Burundara with a perfect start, and who else? Boudreaux's done it, and well, the Eagles wanted a fast start. They've scored for fun against South Melbourne this year, and we'll put that one down in just the fourth minute. It's Burundara 1, South Melbourne 0. And Anna Harrington, it's the last thing South Melbourne wanted as the underdogs coming in today. No, and it really hurts when it comes from a set play. You think you can get it covered, but Burundari, you can tell they've been working on that. And when you've got some really potent players like Boudreaux, as we said, has been terrorising them all year. She's just able to rise up highest, and she doesn't miss very often, Taryn Boudreaux. And uh, if you let her go unchecked, she'll punish you every time. Well, famous for scoring with the ball at her feet, but that was really an opportunistic header out of the reach of Francis Land. And just four minutes in, it's Burundara 1, South Melbourne 0. And if they came in with a conservative approach, maybe try to keep it tight and jag a 1-0 win, they're going to have to throw those plans out and actually attack now. And that's exactly what they're going to do down the right. Dudley Smith crossing it into the area. Here's Eliadis. Spins on the ball. Purple shirts closing in. 
Finds an option in lines, tries to go with a lob, and that one was more a mishit shot, and it floats harmlessly out for a goal kick. Cheryl, down to you. Thoughts on the goal? Oh, beautiful. Oh, sorry, from the goal, I was just watching that beautiful work from Dudley Smith. It was perfect to watch. I think the goal was up the other end from me, but it looked like a, a great lob through, and I think Doreen Boudreau was just in the right spot and able to climb high enough to get her head on the ball from that what it looked like to me. Goal kick is a shallow one. South Melbourne trying to attack again, but it's going to run down to Lanning, who holds. Really like that work um, just right in the 18-yard box from Tiffany Eliadis. Had Felt like she had all the time in the world and uh, was able to eventually get the flick ball back. South Melbourne defence being put under a little bit of pressure. Farquhar should have it covered. Passing in triangles a bit. Farquhar and the ball just trickles out past her and it's going to be throw into Burundara on the commentary side wing. So Ellis to pick it up for Burundara. Throws it over the head of Cabaretta. Boudreau's there. Now Jackson. Pass sideways. Straight to Howes of South Melbourne. And now a lot of players looked at each other and Cabaretta was first to respond. Trying a long shot. Takes a deflection. Chiel under the pump here. Boudreau snapping at the heels. Chiel does well. Chiel able to clear as far as lines. Lobbing it over the top only as far as Jensen. Jensen now. Jackson. Back to Jacobs. Laying it out to the left for Gummer. Right in front of the Burundara bench. Coach Sean Ontong up on the touchline, shouting instructions. Here goes Gummer. Up against the corner flag. Is she able to win a corner? It's out for a goal kick. And uh, we haven't had a chance to speak about Amy Jackson yet, Anna Harrington, but in the middle of this Burundara Eagles midfield, she was the player of the year, won the gold medal at gold medal night. She was the player's player of the year, voted by her peers, top scorer, also won the media award for player of the year, really did have a sensational uh, medal and awards night and was actually quite embarrassed to have swept the pool of awards. Yeah, I can imagine, but just we'll quickly, stay with Eliadis. Play. Eliadis playing through Dudley Smith, one-on-one. -on -one. It's a great chance and a good save coming in from Lanning. It was not a well-hit shot. And perhaps Dudley Smith didn't realise just how open she was there to have a crack at goal and really just gently prodded it at Lanning, who was able to make a regulation save. She really just needed to place it there because she was pretty much one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Her pace had got her past the defensive line and it was a fantastic opportunity for South Melbourne. Burundara just now getting another opportunity to try and close things down. Lines. Tries to play a crossfield pass. Took a little nick, but it's going to work. Martineau breaking into the area. And shooting at the near post, that one is held by Lanning as well. Mindful not to take it out for a corner. Can't leave Natalie Martin though with that much space. She's such a class player and whether she, she often comes in from a central position but just starting in from the right wing there, she can cause all sort of trouble and she's scored from those sorts of positions before so that's one that Burundara just be, need to be really watchful of when our players like Gummer are also going to be bombing um, forward. Ellis carefully takes it around Pollock and now breaking with a bit of acceleration, Chiel comes over, no nonsense, puts it out for a throw. South Melbourne under the pump at the moment. 1-0 down, only early stages of this grand final. And we've played seven and a half minutes. Cabaretta wrestling for the ball. It's gone into touch again. But on Amy Jackson, Anna, what a sensational year she had. Oh, brilliant. I believe she's the first female player to win the, um, the media award as well, which is an even more impressive effort. Uh, just take a moment as Burundara look to attack again. Ellis crossing it in, land under no pressure, able to hold the ball. But yeah, she's a sensational player. We saw her quality in last year's W League season where she scored a hat-trick, I think it was against Adelaide United. Um, she's a class player, she's aggressive, she's physical, she can score goals, and uh, she's very defensive-minded as well. Um, she'll always track back and do the hard yards. Um, so she's just the sort of player that you want to be leading or one of the leaders in your squad. And uh, she just looks like she's getting better and fitter and just improving all the time, which just makes her a really attractive prospect. Throw in for Burundara, almost at halfway. Gummer sends it down the line. Boudreau flicking it over the top. And now pass back into Boudreau's alley. Very narrow down the left, being closed down two on one. Trying to take on Pritchard. Can't find a way out. Howes is there to support and knocks it into touch. Newman to take the throw. Burundara happy to slow things down. Very sunny over on the outer side of the ground here at the Venado Club. And they're all going to take a breather here as Gummer comes over and pulls rank to throw the ball back in. Don't blame her. It's uh, pretty warm. You want to try and uh, conserve your energy as much as possible with just the 1-0 lead. Boudreau to Jackson. Now Callahan into a 50-50. Howes heads it away. Straight back to Callahan, And now Cheel clearing the ball. Dudley Smith can't control it, but eventually... Brings it to ground level. Pollock playing it straight to Ellis. 
He's had a bit to do early in this one. The right back for Burundara. Gummer sending it down the line. Martino intercepts. Plays it over the top into touch out for a throw. Cheryl, the game has just hit a bit of the first lull of the afternoon. Yeah, and I think what South Melbourne have done, they've been able to maintain that pressure that Burundara have been throwing after them. So I think they've maintained their structure quite well. It's, it's a good positive sign for them. One one goal down, OK, they'd prefer not to be there right now, but most of their game's been pretty, pretty structured and looking good. Distribution can perhaps improve a little bit and maybe just get those one touches a little bit cleaner. Jensen at the centre of defence. Dudley Smith comes in shoulder to shoulder, wins the ball, but then it's taken straight back away, out for another throw. Farquhar in the last little piece of shade out there on the ground. The shadows will get longer as the game goes on. Hurls it in. Lines. Plays it back to Farquhar. Cabaretta comes in to win the ball. And the numbers win out for South Melbourne. Jackson coming in now, taking it away. Pass straight to Baker. Dudley Smith sends it sideways. Howes is there. Dudley Smith lost her boot in that, so she's still getting back to her feet. Martino, waiting for options ahead of the ball. Instead has to go to the central defender in Cheel. And Cheel looking for a runner. Lines. Plays it back to Pritchard. Good passing movement here from South Melbourne, but they need to move it just a bit further down the pitch into a more dangerous area. Able to keep possession at the moment. Keep Burundara chasing. We'll see Eliada just making a run. They're going to have to be aware of this. And she offside drifted offside. Play. And I think she knew. She actually turned around to the assistant referee there as Baker played the ball mm -hmm. over the top. And uh, just saw Farquhar there just ready to bomb up this side. I think almost expecting it to come over to the left flank. They elected to switch over to the right, South Melbourne. But you can see there that their, their fullbacks are very willing to bomb um, the same way that Gamma does for Borondara. Just looking at that Borondara lineup, it is that... Um, You've uh, got the four at the back with Gummer, Tay, Jensen and Ellis. Callahan as a defensive mid. Jackson as the attacking midfielder. Newman on the left. Cavaretta on the right. And Boudreau, main forward, who's drifting to the left a bit as well. Land here is going to be closed down by Boudreau. Charging in. Leaving it to the last second. And the clearance is a bit shallow. Jacobs challenging against Pollock. And now the ball knocked to Boudreau. Trying to guide it into her possession. And eventually it's gone out for a corner. Pritchard. Getting the last touch there. So, again, passing out from the back has been a bit of a problem for South Melbourne. They're playing themselves into a little bit of trouble every time Burundara advance up. Yeah, and Pedro has just been one of the main reasons for that. She's got so much energy. Um, she just continually chases, harasses. She wants the ball. She wants to force a turnover. She's put the pressure on land a few times, and now she's turning it on the South Melbourne back four. She's got one goal already. We see the short corner come in. Jackson sends it into the area, but it's shallow and cleared away no nonsense on this occasion. I'm not a huge fan of short corners as you know Teo um, when they work out they can work out beautifully but that one um, probably not where Amy Jackson was hoping for it to end up but uh, Gummer will take the ball on the left flank danger again Boudreau right on the edge of the area back heel not quite on the same page as the teammates but Gummer will make it work and wins another corner I think if you've scored one goal with a header from a set piece so far you just bomb it in and try your luck and try and do it again just try and get it anywhere near Boudreau um, she seems to make something happen every time it goes near her. I'm liking seeing Alex Gummer advance up the pitch. As we said, she can, she can bomb and uh, just using her footwork there nicely. Jackson going to come in with the corner. So, plenty of numbers forward. Caparetta probably the tallest to aim for, but drove the target again. Slides off the head of Pollock and through the area. Caparetta chasing it out to the right. Taking on Farquhar here. I think Farquhar had the touch, so she's got to play it and can't keep it in. Out for another corner. And Jackson again coming over to take. Burundara on top at the moment. We hope you're enjoying this live coverage of the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final. Live on FFE Team App. We've gone 13 minutes now in the first half. Plenty of fans behind Amy Jackson in the stand here as she takes this corner as well. Everything measured up and here it comes. Driving it to a central position. Headed away by Pollock again. Top of the box. Bit of wrestling going on. Newman. Bending it across the top of the area. Sits up Gummer, chesting it down for Cavaretta. And now two South Melbourne players trim each other. Pollock and Farquhar getting their legs tangled. And fortunately for them, the ball didn't break unkindly. And it means that South Melbourne are able to keep the ball. Little back heel from Baker and Pollock recovering. Able to push forward here. Off to the races. Baker, shoulder to shoulder here with Ellis, who uses just that little bit of advantage with the 
near side to the ball and in the end ushered out for a goal kick. Well defended there by Olivia Ella. She actually popped up as one of the players training with Melbourne City in a video that the mm. W League team released. And again, a big grand final from her here today. You never know what opportunities might be waiting over the summer. Absolutely. She's a very talented footballer. Got some great pace. I really like the, the strength that she showed. Um, just used her body really well to uh, help force that ball out. Jackson with the header. Down to Cavaretta. Sending it down the line. This one's going to bounce high on the synthetic. And Cheel getting a solid not on the ball. Back to Francis Land. Rolls it out to Cheel. Lines. Can't keep possession. Callahan. Cavaretta passing it to Jacobs. Now Tay. Out to the left. Gummer. Chance to work her way forward again. High ball. It's neither a cross nor a pass. And it's easily held there by the goalkeeper, Francis Land. Cheryl Downs, uh, we're 15 minutes in. Update on what you've uh, seen from ground level so far. One of the things that's changed at the moment is that the wind does seem to pick up a couple of times. So with that high lob ball that went down towards the keeper, you could see it holding up in the wind. So that's one thing to keep mindful of. I think the other thing for me is that Burundara are probably managing their nerves a little bit better. South Melbourne a couple of times, a couple of players going for the same ball and really just um, messing it up. Beautiful little nutmeg there from Alex Gummer. Thank you, Cheryl. Gummer laying it off to Newman. Burundara getting forward in numbers. This cross through the area and Farquhar puts it behind. Cavaretta was lurking, but a little bit of an ole moment there from Alex Gummer showing the skills and able to nutmeg the marker. And in the end, I think the assistant referee said that the, it was actually offside before it went out for a corner. Yeah, I imagine Gummer would have been filthy with her um, pass slash cross before that didn't really work out. Um, she's got some tremendous skill and uh, just wanted to show it off a little bit there. Um, be filthy if, that were, if you copped one of them. Um, nobody likes getting megged. So a bit of cheeky work there from Alex Gummer. Well, we saw it in the NPL final, South Melbourne against the Bentley Greens, that Iqbal Jawadi got nutmegged and then clipped the heels of the man who did it on his way past and got himself a second yellow and a send-off as a result. So you've got to be careful in those situations as the defender as well as the attacker. It's always that little fear of retribution for showing someone up. South Melbourne trying to press forward, but Tay puts a boot in. Jacobs now battling against Pollock. Callahan and now Baker, and that's a foul given away by Alison Baker, although uh, interesting call, as though it was a ball that was there to be won. We've seen a few passages of play where the teams are just passing it back and forth to each other and then the, the longer passing moves on in as many uh, advanced areas on the pitch. Francis Land under pressure here, has to kick it out on the non-preferred left foot, but gets it away to lines. Jackson, Callahan. crowd weren't happy at the lack of a call on that occasion. And the ball spills. South Melbourne will get it back. cheel has got to pick a pass, though. And Burundara, have, again, press numbers right up here, keeping them under pressure. Howes can't keep possession. Jacobs. Now Cavaretta, leaving it for Jackson. Pops it over the top. Boudreaux, the ball bounces. She was offside. And in any case, Land has come out and just ironed her out there, claiming the ball. But I think Boudreaux knew she'd straight offside there. And it's going to be a South Melbourne ball. Yeah, definitely. Um... Alex Cheel doing a few nice things here and there. I think she's really been the rock in the defence for South Melbourne so far. When they've looked under pressure, and I've seen Land put under pressure quite a few times, um, Cheel really seems to be that get-out option. She just has that little bit more time, a little bit more of a clear head um, under pressure. You know, she's been here before, and she's a very experienced footballer. So just seeing her early on play a really important role for South Melbourne in preventing what could have been a second goal a few times. Well, Baker's got to be careful here. That's uh, Sorry, in fact, it's Pritchard. My apologies to reasonably uh, similar-looking players in tall ones out there on the pitch, but I was about to suggest repetitive fouling might be the way the first yellow of the game comes out, but Jesse Pritchard there. Just a conventional foul, and again, a dangerous free kick because we've seen one-headed goal already. Sarah Jacobs standing over this one. I reckon Amy Jackson will be the target for this one. She loves rising high for the header. Here comes the ball in. Cheel, uncontested header. Jackson with a volley to follow it up, and it's deflected away by Pollock. They haven't cleared their lines just yet, South Melbourne. Pollock with a header again, and Lyons volleys this one clear. That was a vicious volley, but there were so many bodies between the ball and goal that it was always at risk of either a deflection or perhaps being blocked straight off the boot. But Burundara continue to press. Oh, they're really making work hard, and... You see Amy Jackson just really starting to get involved. As I said before, she's just a great physical player. She's really the perfect height for that strong midfielder. She can get up and win the headers, but she also uses her strength really well when she's got the ball at her feet. Just They're just going to have to watch her all day because 
she'll go up for the header and then she'll unleash something like a left foot volley and you just don't know what's going to come next. And now we're seeing the ball going Burundara's way. Not sure what that was for. In fact, it's going to be South Melbourne. It must have been for a little bit of afters, perhaps, after the pass was played. But it's going to be their free kick. Game is almost uh, entirely being played in Burundara's attacking half. So South Melbourne, some welcome relief to actually move the ball and get themselves into an attacking position. Maybe not with free kicks like that, though. Caparetta, first to the ball. Farquhar gets a second chance. Boudreau knocks that one into touch. It's going to be a South Melbourne throw. Yeah, she won't be too happy with that free kick. Um, just really sort of skidded along the ground. And as you said, she'll get a couple more chances here. She's provided some good run up the wing. So she takes them on here, Farquhar. Eliadis. Switch flanks. Baker. Jensen's got the step here on lines. Takes it back out towards the corner, though. No nonsense from Sky Jensen. Just puts it out for a throw. And we're going to have multi-ball for a second here, but cleaned up, ready to bring it back into play. Jensen gets it away, only as far as Pollock. Yeah. South Melbourne trying to create an equaliser here, going behind in just the fourth minute. Jackson thought she'd won the ball off Howes there, and you saw the surprised look on her face, but it is going to be another South Melbourne free kick. Uh, Amy Jackson had the very much, what, me? Sort of look about her then. I don't think she thought she'd give him one away at all. Um, well, being the uh, the gold medal winner, she knows the referees obviously like the way that she plays, <laughs> so maybe th thought she might have had a freebie there on grand final day, but obviously not the case. She's a strong player as it is, so it's very easy to uh, just push the line into giving away a free kick. Oh, so, decent position here for South Melbourne. Ball played quickly to Eliadis. Of course, they've had one golden opportunity to equalise. Dudley Smith shot, which she really scuffed into the path of Anna Lanning, who, let's be fair, hasn't had a great deal of work to do since. No, she's made a couple of good saves, though. That one, uh, diving one, was really nice. Um, but she hasn't, as you said, had a great deal of work to do. Wind holding this one up. Nice Pritchard, deep long kick. Pritchard heads it away. Jacobs down to Newman. Scott Jacobs breaking on the left. Leaves her a lot to do, though, and Howe's always had it covered. Out for another throw. Cheryl on the sideline. South Melbourne uh, winning a few fouls in their attacking half, but not actually able to keep the ball down in their attacking third at the moment. Yeah, and one of the things I can see for South Melbourne down here at the moment is that they are losing that structure just a tiny little bit. Um, one of the things I've seen is Nat Martin now is really pulling into the, the centre of the field more than keeping the width out wide. And, and I think for South Melbourne to maybe get more of the ball and hold it, create more options, they need to keep that width. Ball cleared into touch once again. Cheryl, where are you on the ground at the moment? I'm just trying to describe to the, the viewers whereabouts you're watching the game from at ground level. Pretty much on the half line. We'll call it the Cheryl side of the stadium, um, almost near the fourth official. All right, well, we'll uh, get you to keep a keen ear on both sidelines as well. Hear what South Melbourne coach Socrates Nicolaitis and also the Burundara coach Sean Ontong might be shouting from the two benches at the moment to coaches who in their first season coaching in the Sportsmart WPL have managed to create quite good reputations for themselves. Ontong, of course, has been a regular on the bench as well for the Oakley Cannons as an assistant to Arthur Pappas during the FFA Cup. That run come to an end on Wednesday night, of course, at the hands of Hume City. Jacobs. Shoulder to shoulder with Pollock. Loses out. Now Baker sends it forward. Flag stays down here. Opportunity for South Melbourne. Eliadis putting the pressure on Jensen, who again, no nonsense, straight really out for well a throw. There. Jensen did really well there because Dudley Smith was bursting and so was Eliadis and they were both in really good position. She made the choice, she cut between the two and was able to cut things off. Lines right on the edge of the penalty area. Plays it back, Pollock with the cross in, dangerous, missed and now chance on the follow up here for Farquhar. Can she keep it in the penalty area? Left footed shot, scoops it and Lanning, casual as you like, just walks out almost like it was a dead ball and just makes... Well, in, to use a cricketing uh, terminology, because she is a cricketer as well, that was like Mark War taking a slips catch. I don't understand. Too easy. That was a live ball, and she just caught it in stride. No big deal, and the attack breaks down emphatically as a result. Fair bit bigger than a cricket ball, so um, got plenty of time to see it coming. Uh, yeah, Lanning did well. I really like the persistence of Farquhar there. Just kept going and going and created opportunities, and then they even had a crack with the left foot. That's what you want to see. You want to see players trying to create opportunities. Lanning took that very casually, but at least it's a shot on target and heading towards the keeper and making her do a bit of work. And South Melbourne not afraid to get some numbers forward early in the game. They don't want to go 2-0 down because of course Burundara scored 4 and 6 respectively in the two meetings between these sides this year. So 
Once Burundara hits stride, the goals do keep coming. Gummer taking on Howes. Cross from deep, and this one's headed behind by Pritchard. Yet another corner. And another opportunity for Burundara to put South Melbourne under the pump. Just looking at that lineup, as mentioned, uh, South Melbourne, Farquhar, Chill, Pritchard and Howes in, uh, in defence. Pollock playing more defensive midfielder. Lines, Baker, Martineau through the midfield. Martineau pushing out wide. And then Dudley Smith and Eliadis up front. So keeping the two up front so far, South Melbourne. But right now, it is all Burundara's way as they line up for the corner. So here's Jacobs to take, driving it to the near post, and that one goes out for a goal kick. Comes to nothing in the end. Uh, Cheryl, are you hearing anything being shouted from the uh, sidelines over on the uh, outer side of the ground to our broadcast position? No, not really. I know that Sean Ontong is very vocal in what he's saying over there, but actually catching what exactly what he's saying is a little bit more difficult. Callahan sliding in right in front of our broadcast position, putting it out for a throw, and it's actually gone out for a Burundara throw. And, well, Farquhar's got to be careful, throwing the ball away. Just has a little wag of the finger from the referee there, saying maybe uh, don't try your luck. You don't want to get a cheap yellow card for time-wasting. Throw in comes to nothing in the end. It's back in dispute. Dudley Smith hooking it forward. Ball bouncing at the top of the box, landing out of her line. And Tay wasn't 100% sure there, but she peels away with a smile on her face, so it's all worked out in the end. Drop kick sent into the attacking half. Skims off the head of Cheel. Farquhar backtracking. And now, Bland with a bit more room to breathe as she passes out. South Melbourne working it back out to the left. Land showing plenty of confidence in her defence. If she didn't back them in, she wouldn't be putting those really short passes in. Um, often they've got a Burundara player on the hammer. And, yeah, just backing in players like Cheel to be able to... Uh, win the ball and then work the ball away and South Melbourne are doing it well here as Howes puts the long ball in. Oh, attempted crossfield pass, Gummer just extended the right leg and was able to intercept. Did well, uh, got challenged and just managed to get one more foot to it to put it away. Jackson puts the long ball out wide. Newman takes possession now, trying to spin past Howes, can't do so and it's into touch. Out for a throw. Some really great work there from Alex Gummer. She took on two players, went to take on the third and nearly lost the ball, but was just quick enough of mind to slide the foot out and push the ball forward and uh, actually managed to create another attack. Boudreau allowed to turn and face. Goes round Cheel, taking a long shot. And Land can't hold it, but it wasn't in any great danger. Of course, we saw Boudreau. She is a master of the angles. She scored an amazing goal in the Team AF Cup final. Left-footed on the wrong side for a left-footer out on the, the left flank and curled it into the opposite side netting. So, Sort of goal that shouldn't be allowed. Dangerous from anywhere. That's, that's the conclusion that any defender would have to reach. Dudley Smith now playing it back to Martineau. Clipping it over the top. Baker tries to keep the ball in South Melbourne possession, but that one's gone straight to Jackson. Now Ellis allowed to break on the right. And that pass is over hit and will run down the line. So tempo is starting to slow down here, perhaps to be expected on a warm day on a synthetic pitch. We're 27 minutes in and uh, it is on the Jets Fitness scoreboard. South Melbourne nil, Burundara Eagles 1. Just working the ball out here, South Melbourne. I've liked that they've tried to get back into that passing game. They were nervous early, but now they're backing themselves in to do that short, sharp passing and then look to knock the ball out to their quick forwards. Here's Dudley Smith advancing. Gummer making a, a difficult for her. Pollock now trying to switch flanks. Eliadis was lurking on the left. And that one has run down to Lanning once again. And I think whenever players get the opportunity, they will just slow things down. And Lanning has no real reason to hurry things up here so everyone gets a breather even though she's got a live ball at her feet and in the end Dudley Smith obliged to come in and actually get this grand final back underway. Yeah she's a smart player Anna Lanning. She's uh, willing to soak up every second she needs to. And now they're going to break quickly. Gummer on the left. Takes on Martineau. Able to drift into the centre. Now playing a pass looking for Cavaretta. Land out of her line. Able to take the ball. They haven't really committed anyone down the right flank, Burundara. Ellis has been largely staying at home, and they don't actually have a dedicated player on the right. They've really hugged the left with most of their attacking so far in this match. And they've managed to, to be to their credit, they've managed to actually work some really good moves down the left. Um, Boudreaux's drifted out wide as well. It's And Newman's there, and Gummer has been bombing up the left too. They've certainly stacked up the side. Well, good ball from Jacobs. Cabaretta's got an opening here. It's Rani Cabaretta. Squaring it, Boudreaux was unmarked, can't find her. 
and Martineau able to come in and clean up. Well, that was uh, a real lapse in concentration from South Melbourne. Boudreau all on her own. And when Cavaretta looked up, I couldn't, maybe she couldn't even believe it herself that uh, the most dangerous player on the pitch had metres and metres of space. Yeah, it was a really great run. We were just talking about how uh, Burundara had been stacking the left side and they managed to pull South Melbourne over there as well. And it was a nice ball out to Cavaretta who... Well played by well. Dudley Smith. Sorry, Anna will stay with players. Baker tries to swing it towards Eliadis. Jensen with the clearance. Gummer can only poke it back to Dudley Smith. Now a lofted ball, and that one is neither a cross nor a shot and easily held by Lanning. Yeah, not troubling Anna Lanning there at all. But as we said, yeah, it's just some good vision. Cavaretta got out into a little bit of space, and then to a credit, it didn't work this time, but she could have blazed away and looked for the goal. But she saw her teammate, well, as you said, the most dangerous player on the ground in Boudreaux with metres of space and just was willing to go for the cutback. It shows good trust in your forwards that they'll get the job done. And while the execution wasn't quite there this time, it's... a uh, some really good signs for Burundara. Tay heading it out for another throw. Cross down to Cheryl Downs at the next break in play, but stay with it for now. South Melbourne looking for an equaliser behind in the fourth minute and still 1-0 down at the moment. Here's Lyons taking on Callahan. Callahan pushed over. Lyons able to keep possession. Little 1-2 with Dudley Smith. Now turning onto her right foot, and I think the studs may have just caught in the synthetic turf there because she went to load up for a cross and nothing happened. And now Burundara are breaking. It's two on one. Newman, plenty of territory to work with. Ellis bombing forward down the right. Boudreau on the left. And the offside flag goes up. And, well, they overcooked it there, Burundara. Things really opening up for them there. Cheryl on the sidelines when Burundara break at pace. South Melbourne really are struggling to go with them. Yeah, beautiful run that they had just then. A couple of things that Sean Ontong has been saying. Defensively, he wants them to make sure that they're closing up the middle and then watching the play from the sidelines. Um, and offensively, I suppose, one of the things he's calling out is for Alex Gummer to actually move up the pitch a little bit, um, press higher. So that's their strategy right now. Safe to say he's gone for some unconventional uh, positions for his players, Sean Ontong, at least based on what we'd seen in the past. Gummer is a left-back, Jess Tay is a centre-back. It's not, not what we're used to, uh, Anna. We'll stay with play for now because Pollock is breaking down the left, taking on Callahan. Cuts back onto the right. Now a left-footed shot, and that one just drifts out for a goal kick. Very dangerous from long range. Jamie Pollock has already built a reputation for being a long shot specialist. But really, you can see the logic to what uh, Burundara have done because Tay looks comfortable at central defence and Gum has given them plenty of drive down the left. Absolutely, and Tay we know. We saw at Bulleen is a class midfielder in her own right. She can play as a defensive midfielder. Callahan fills that role at Burundara. So to have a centre-back, it's almost like the way Chill plays for South Melbourne that has the confidence and the skills to be able to start setting up plays and isn't just there to stop... Um, to stop goals, it's, it's really valuable and it just adds another dimension and almost adds another midfielder um, to your side. Interesting before we saw Ellis did actually bomb down the right when we saw Boudreaux flag for offside. So it's not often that she's been going for it, but we know she's got that pace and we might see it a few more times, especially with it being a hot day. Um, you want to conserve a little bit of that run for later, I would think. And just a reminder that if we are level at the end of 90 minutes, extra time and then penalties again if required, there must be a winner today. And now we've got a foul and it's going Burundara's way. So we've gone past half an hour. It's still South Melbourne nil. Burundara Eagles one. Taryn Boudreau the scorer. And some great opportunities at both ends now for more goals. South Melbourne really will be wondering how they aren't level almost instantly after going behind. Brittany Dudley-Smith with a great chance saved by Anna Lanning. Errant pass. Eliadis. Gets things moving. Pollock breaking down the left. She's got Dudley Smith in the area. Got to take on Jensen first, and it's a physical challenge from the Burundara centre-back, and able to put the ball out and win a throw for her trouble. Well played by Jensen on that occasion. Really like that from Jensen. She turned the ball over. You could tell she was filthy with herself, but it's the sign of a good player when, you use the when you've got a great attitude and you just say, no, nah, I'm going to go and shut down the next attack. And she did, and it was a perfectly timed tackle. Very physical, but she got all the ball there as well, so... Really nice recovery. Given away by Pritchard. Boudreau allowed to run and now has Newman in support. It's Newman breaking. She's got a look here, Newman. And it's saved by Land, deflecting it out. And the referee says goal kick. Well, that looked like it got a touch. I think you've got to give credit to the keeper there. That looked like a very good save. Instead, it's a South Melbourne ball and another missed opportunity for Burundara. Yeah. Well, it was either a missed opportunity or it was a good save. And based on the referee's call, it's a missed opportunity. So... 
Well, yeah, very I, very nice work. There I want to give the credit to the keeper there. That well, charging well, out of her got line, the got the goal kick. Very brave. I really liked it. It, it made made herself big. Uh, Newman had a few yards on her defender oh. and could have put that placed that anywhere, but Land did well, came at it just the right time. But um, just shows how much speed has she got. It was a nice little flick on from Boudreaux, and Newman just burnt everyone. It just adds another element to your side. She's had eight goals for the year prior to this match, and yeah, she just adds that little extra something to that forward group. Boudreaux trying to keep possession, but Eliadis comes in, takes it away. Farquhar. Plays it back to Eliadis. Deep in her defensive half. Ball over the top. Dudley Smith chasing Gummer here. Gummer eventually puts the left foot through it. And that one is going to roll out towards the touchline. And look at again the speed of Newman herring back. Trying to prevent it going out for a throw, but it has. Lightning. She's going to go all the way back up forward to put the pressure on Howes. And Howes now can try and pick across to the top of the area. Ellis is there. Caught with the ball at her feet, though. Well played by Pollock to take it away. Now Eliadis trying her luck with a long shot, and that one can't dip in time. It goes wide of the target and out for a goal kick. Let's throw it down to Cheryl on the sidelines. Cheryl, thoughts on the last 10 minutes or so? Yeah, I think South Melbourne are trying to get themselves back in the ball just down at the South Melbourne bench here, and you can hear them calling out to Tiff Eliadis on that one to actually great job to get the ball up. So I think they want to push forward and try and get the ball into the area where it can be dangerous. So that's good for them. I think just the pace of Burundurra, though, is just amazing to be down here at ground level they can create so many opportunities just by the pace that they have on the ball thank you Cheryl lines slicing across into the area headed away by Callahan South Melbourne with a two-on-one Pritchard's ventured a long way forward Howes plays it to Cheel Farquhar also getting forward here in support plays it to Eliadis let it run and then gives away was that a handball I'm not really sure if that was a foul or a handball but in any case it's Burundara ball just uh, on Eliadis, I really liked her involvement over the past few minutes. We know how dangerous she is with the ball at her feet, and when she's anywhere close to goal, she can unleash, as we saw just before. And there'd be a few times where she'd have hit goals from that sort of position. So Burundara are just going to have to be quite careful that they don't let her get off the leash too much. Um, they want to really try and keep defending her. She, as we mentioned before, she switched over to that left flank, um, swapped with Dudley Smith. She can really create, and she's a real danger player. Um, so they're just going to have to be careful and make sure they keep an eye on her because she's the sort of player that when she's on she can tear a game apart. 36 and a half minutes down so still plenty of time until the break and now here's Howes working her way down the right taking on Jacobs ball takes a deflection and last touch was off Howes it's going to be a goal kick. Seen a little bit more attack down that right wing from South Melbourne have to wonder if they've decided that well Alex Gummer's going to bomb up and create a bit of havoc. Newman is going to be running on that left flank. Let's see if we can get them down the other way. And Howes is a strong player, but she's got a bit of pace to her as well. And just seeing her run down that wing a couple of times, it just might make those Burundara wingers stop and think for a moment um, and remind them that they've got to defend as well. Pollock. Tay with the header. Newman now. Pollock back in again. Wins the ball over to Baker. Howes is there. And the ball out for a South Melbourne throw. And the coach, Socrates Nicolaitis, coming over, playing ball boy to get his team back moving again. And he's motioning for players to get forward. Commit numbers forward at 1-0 down. Try to cancel out the deficit. Dudley Smith taking on Jacobs. And now Tay. Only as far as Howes. Martineau is there. To Lines. Tries to spin on the ball. Tay with another clearance. Only as far as Howes. Good sustained attacking spell for South Melbourne at the moment. Question is, can they turn it into a clear-cut chance? Cheel Plays it to Bacon. Now to Eliadis. Ellis comes in and wins the ball. Jackson. Jensen. 50-50. Callahan back to Jacobs. And now trying to play through a number of those fast players, but... Pritchard and Howes able to combine and win possession back. Martineau plays it to Howes and she's bombing forward again. Carol Howes wide on the right. Plenty of players to aim for. Crosses it. Baker on the volley and puts it into the side netting. Jeez, that was a nice opportunity there. Just looks so dangerous. Just one to touch on though. Newman 
in that challenge. She just came up a little bit proppy. It looked ugly at, at the start. Not not for any malicious reasons or anything like that. Just a clash of legs. She got up a little bit proppy. Probably just um, feeling that leg, making sure she's okay. She's staying out there, but just had a few limps before she got back into it. So just keep an eye. We'll be good to keep an eye on her and see if anything comes of that. But I think she'll be able to shake it off. And but South Melbourne just looking so dangerous at the moment, Taylor. They're really applying the pressure, forcing Burundara back into really their defensive third and uh, not giving him much space at all. Dudley Smith, caught in possession, out for a throw. Um, we are live and interactive, hashtag WPLVic. If you want to send us a message, uh, shout out to former South Melbourne player Catherine Goff, who is watching from Russia. There we go. Anna, That's so fantastic. I, I actually saw Catherine Goff score about uh, seven or eight weeks ago for South Mel uh, Yeah, for South against uh, South Yarra. So, Catherine, thanks for joining us on FFV Team App for this afternoon's live coverage. It's probably late on a Saturday night, maybe early hours of Sunday morning now over in Russia at the moment. So thank you for tuning in. Hashtag WPLVic. We'll read out the best tweets we get. Ball into touch and out for a throw. Cheryl on the sidelines. Still a little while until halftime. Who do you think is, is holding up better in terms of a bit of run in the legs? I think, as Anna said earlier, I think it's South Melbourne that's coming through a little bit stronger. We've got about five minutes to go, and I'm right behind Kate Jakowicz, and she's just predicted there's probably going to be one minute of added time after this. So if South Melbourne can hold it out, they might be able to get a score, but there's still a lot going on out there with Burundara pushing forward. Newman caught in possession by Martino. Eliadis has drifted over to the right. Takes the ball away. Wanted to play a long pass, but instead goes to Baker. Now Howes to Pollock. Back to Baker. Cheryl's on the money here. South Melbourne finishing the half just that little bit stronger. Now taking on Gummer. Eliadis trying to show that turn of speed. Wide on the right. Gummer loses her footing. Eliadis can swing in a ball here. Skims off the head. Farquhar is forward. Lines is there as well. Bodies crashing in. Burundara clear their lines. And Jackson hooking the ball around the body, able to get it away. And South Melbourne bench wanted a foul there on Howes, but it's gone into touch and it's a Burundara ball. It's kind of a very physical game, this. Um, not really many free kicks being given away, but it's a grand final. Both teams going in for every ball, every high ball, everything on the ground. They're, they're not taking any steps backwards. It's just uh, some really good football to watch. Um, Amy Jackson with that sort of hooking kick before, just encapsulating that. Gummer. Trying to take on Baker. Able to dribble past her, but way past Martino. Out for another throw. The two benches for both sides. Burundara, Ali Gafer, Sarah Petty, Lucy Johnston, Amy Medwin, and uh, also Kayo Kugayama. And on the bench for South Melbourne, Jade Feeks, Nat Brajanovsky, Caitlin Greaser, Jasmine Aritzolo, and the backup goalkeeper, Coco Mostorovic. Ball into touch and out for a throw. I'm sure we'll see the subs in the second half on a warm day like today, Anna. You'd think so, um, especially if South are looking for something that they'll need to potentially break it, well, to either get even or if they do equalise, someone will look to break a deadlock. It's a warm day. And it's a little a oh, little bit of a I think gesture that's, here. That's just the frustration of a warm day, I think. It's, it's only a throw, but you can see there a number of South Melbourne players threw their arms up in frustration. Maybe the uh, pressure of being 1-0 down starting to take its toll that feeling constantly of chasing the game. They've been behind since the fourth minute and they know that a second would make it very, very difficult. So the game on a knife edge as far as South Melbourne is concerned. Pollock full of running. Really trying to boss this grand final. Plays it, but Tay reads it better. Gummenau hooks it away. Pollock with another chance though. Plays it down the right. Dudley Smith was ready to break, but Gummer intercepting once more. And now Tay Plays it long. Cheel wins the ball in the air over Jackson. Lions can't put a boot on it though. Pollock comes in, wins it back. Having an inspired little minute here, Jamie Pollock plays the ball over the top. Eliadis away. She's only got Dudley Smith to aim for in the middle. Maybe she can go her own way. Tay does well to come in and take the ball. And now into touch and all eyes on the ref. It's a Burundara throw. That was really good from Jess Tay. I've been impressed with her. She's held up really strongly under some sustained pressure from South Melbourne. She just gets that little touch in or she plays the ball away or she does what she has to do to get the ball out of trouble. Jackson just kicking for territory on this occasion. And that one is going to bend down towards the touchline and out for another throw. South Melbourne, they'll feel as though they've got the momentum. Half time perhaps not coming at the right time for them. 90 seconds plus stoppage to go. 
Burundara, if they can score a second here, it would send them into the rooms with really one hand on the cup. Boudreau, nice skill to keep the ball at her feet. Callahan now, over the top. Farquhar and Cavaretta. Farquhar able to volley it away. Pollock comes in. Shoulder to shoulder with Boudreau, who wins the ball. Jacobs, trying to find Jackson. Just wanted it a little bit more. Now Gummer. Top of the box, Alex Gummer. Didn't want to shoot. Plays it to Boudreau. What can she conjure up here? It's a gentle shot. And it's easily held by Lant. I thought Alex Gummer was going to go for the shot then. She'd uh, dribbled her way into a really nice position. She's got good vision though, and she is a good passing player. And I think when someone like Boudreau is in a great position, you're always going to look for them. But would have loved to have seen Gummer have a crack there, because I reckon she could have tested Land. Jacobs playing it to Cavaretta again. Holds the ball under pressure. And now she's got Ellis on the right if she wants it, but Cavaretta trying to forge her way through. Gets to the ball and... Perhaps banking on the referee, obliging that it is out for a corner. So a late chance here, last minute of the first half. I think we're about to find out from the fourth official how much stoppage to go, but we'll take the, uh, the corner first, depending on how long. In fact, Cheryl, very quickly, the fourth official's about to hold up the board. How many minutes of stoppage are we going to have at the end of this first half? Just one minute, as predicted earlier. So I think Burundara coming back right now as well. Opportune timing for them to try and hit him with a 2-0 lead. Thank you, Cheryl. Here comes the corner for Jackson. Burundara looking for a second, and Land got a solid enough punch. Newman follows up with the volley, and that one will bounce into the tennis courts behind the goal. But, uh, well, she's not the tallest goalkeeper, Francis Land, but able to at least punch the ball off a few heads there. Yeah, she did well there. It was a nice looping cross coming in from the corner kick. Um, but Newman had a little bit more time then than she thought. Um, probably could have controlled it and then taken the shot. Um, she had a little bit of space, and she's obviously got some really good pace, but just uh, blasted that one over. Cheel just clearing the lines, and now maybe South Melbourne would want to get into the sheds. The good news for them is that it hasn't gone anything like the previous head-to-heads between the two sides, but the bad news is that they are one little down, and this Burundara side, very good when leading. It's half-time here in the Sportsmart Women's Premier League Grand Final. Cheryl Downs, we'll get a quick thought from you at uh, the half-time break. Your observations on the first half, please. I think it's as predicted. We're seeing a great game out there, although the sides have been ebbing and flowing a little bit. Really, really physical from what I can see, and the players are probably going to feel it after the game. They are walking off looking pretty tired, so I imagine they'll try and recover and get ready as quick as possible for the second half coming out there. I'd like to see for South Melbourne, maybe Nat Martin now getting involved a little bit more. She's getting frustrated. I don't think she's getting as much of the ball as she wants and maybe we have to push her or not we, that, but she needs to be pushed further up the field. Thank you Cheryl. Anna Harrington, final thought on the first half. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Burundara getting the early goal. Um, they could have easily gone on with it, but to their credit, South Melbourne really worked their way back into this game. They started to get the game back on their terms in the, probably the second half of that 45 minutes. Um, worked really hard. They made that switch between Eliadis and uh, Dudley Smith to get the ball in Tiff Eliadis uh, at her feet a little bit more, and it paid off. They were really creative, started using some short, sharp passing, and it was working. They were pressurising. They got a few good opportunities. Going the other way, Burundara just have that bit more pace with someone like a Newman who can light things up. But Drew's always looking dangerous. I think we're really set for a fantastic second half, Tao. As the players get tired and um, the day gets hotter, it's, it's going to be a real uh, scrap to win this one. Thank you, Anna Harrington. And uh, we will bring you the second half live here on FFV Team App. We hope you're enjoying the coverage. Don't forget to uh, download Team App. It is free. And hundreds of FFV clubs are already using it as their official club smartphone app. It's also the official app of the FFV. The way Team App works is you can be a member of FFV and a member of your own club. So make sure you check it out. Team App, you can find it in the App Store or Google Play, depending on what sort of phone you use. We'll have the second half live and exclusive coming up after a short break on the Jets Fitness scoreboard at halftime in the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final. It's Burundara Eagles 1 leading South Melbourne nil. We'll be back with you for the second half in about seven or eight minutes. Stay with us here on FFV Team App. Screen or the tennis court's end. Second half underway, Eagles 1-0 up. It's not quite one hand on the cup, but they are closing in on what would be a clean sweep of all the top-level women's trophies in Victorian football. And looking around the pitch, fourth official hasn't announced any substitutions to start the second half, so we will run through the lineups in just a moment. But right now, 
South Melbourne are trying to win possession through Pollock, who heads it over to Lyons. And now Eliata's flag is up. She doesn't know yet. And now we'll have to pull up as the assistant referee flags that she did stray offside. So the Burundara line up to start the second half. Anna Lanning in goal. Sarah Jacobs, Sky Jensen, Ash Callahan, Taryn Boudreau, the goal scorer, Alex Gummer, Alicia Newman, Amy Jackson, Olivia Ellis, Rani Cavaretta, and Jess Tay. And for South Melbourne on the pitch at the minute, Francis Land in goal, Brittany Dudley-Smith, Jesse Pritchard, Natalie Martineau, Alex Cheel, Carol Howes, Tiffany Eliadis, Safri Lines, Jamie Pollock, Lisa Farquhar and Alison Baker. Headed away by Alex Cheel to Eliadis. Now Pollock, who has certainly been the engine room for South Melbourne in this match so far, both winning and trying to play the ball. Callahan to Ellis. Hits it down the right. Looking for the run of Boudreau. Pritchard was thinking about ushering it towards her goalkeeper in land instead. Prods it behind for a corner. So it's an early set piece here for Burundara. Yeah, Boudreau just cut through there and applied the pressure on both the defender Pollock and uh, on land. So they were forced to concede the corner. Just uh, keeping an eye there on Tiffany Eliadis. She's very willing to drop into the midfield and help out. We saw her just before really getting involved. She's still staying up front with... Um, Dudley Smith but expect to see her drop in a few more times throughout this half so Amy Jackson to take the corner not too many numbers committed forward here for Burundara this one's high to the penalty spot Cavaretta with a volley and it's not Ooh. dipping in time and goes over the bar nice effort though um, just having the instincts to put the foot out and have a crack uh, not too far off target there um, and just try and get South Melbourne nervous you'd think it was quite a loopy corner coming in but yeah, just really made something out of nothing a bit there. And South Melbourne will just need to be careful in those set pieces. Eliadis, little back heel on. Farquhar. Straight to Jensen, though. And she's going to play it back to Jess Tay at the centre of defence. Now Jacobs. Looking to play it through for Boudreau. A little bit of space to work with. Closed down by a two-on-one. And now the ball deflects out to the left. Farquhar. Lines. Ball to no one in the end. And it's going to run down towards Anna Lanning. And she won't let it go out for a goal kick. Instead, will insist that a South Melbourne player come up and try to take the ball. Bit of time wasting. And uh, I think we'll see more and more of this as the second half goes on. Yeah, she's shown that she's the clear master of it. You see um, in the W League, Bree Davey um, is really good at that. Just soaks up every second and makes um, an attacker come to her. And it's quite effective. If you've got to soak up 20 seconds, why not? Why not do it? Especially when you've got that slender lead. And um, yeah, it's South Melbourne trying to take it quickly. Pollock looking for Eliadis. And Jensen seeing it out for a throw. Cheryl, thoughts on uh, any substitutions that might be in the pipeline here? I'll give you... I can't see either bench warming up at the moment. Yeah, I don't think either bench is warming up right now. I think they might be waiting just a little bit longer. There's no big concerns and they need the most out of their starting 11 that they can get. Maybe as we're heading towards a 70-minute mark or something, we might see some players come out on the field, some switch. Goal kick a shallow one. But it's going to deflect kindly. Lanning out to, again, and on this occasion won't waste any time. Picks up the ball and drives it long. Newman. Has got a bit of a break here. Cheel backtracking desperately. Newman will take possession of the ball. Lays it back for Jackson. Big 50-50. Jackson prevails. Looking for Boudreau, but it's cleared away by Pritchard. Probably wouldn't see a more physical contest than one between Alex Cheel and Amy Jackson. Just heard a thud as the two of them collided. Ellis with the cross. Boudreau was trying to wind up for a volley, but a good header away again from Pritchard. Howes clears it from the top of the box. Only as far as Jacobs. Struggling against lines and gives away the foul and it is again a South Melbourne ball and there were a lot of fouls in that first half We saw the only goal of the game come from a free kick and South Melbourne weren't able to make a, a great fist of the attacking set pieces that they had in the first 45 yeah, You've got someone like Amy Jackson who can drop back. Here's a, sorry Anna, here's a ball now. Jensen backtracking Had to be careful there. Didn't want to play the back pass with Dudley Smith working and instead, turns around and plays it out for a throw. Yeah, it's been hard for South Melbourne. When you've got someone like an Amy Jackson who can go back and use her height, it just makes things very difficult at the set piece. Pollock, square ball, past Dudley Smith, and there's no one following it up. Clearance from Newman was shallow, but Jackson comes in and takes the ball away from Howes. And now trying to launch a counter-attack. Boudreau, one-on-one -on -one against Pritchard. Into touch. And again, rather than play it quickly, they're... Going to just wait for Gummer to come forward from left back instead. 
And that allows South Melbourne to commit some numbers back in defence. Sizing up our options, Gummer. Jackson. Callahan with a bit of room to move. Well, nice turn on the ball. Back to Jackson. Now back to Tay. South Melbourne pressing up here. Jacobs trying to pick a hole in the South Melbourne press. Over to the right for Ellis. Trying to swing in a pass, but it's deflected off the back of Pollock. Cavaretta now. Jacobs again. Ellis still getting forward. Opportunity for Burundara. And that cross balloons out. Goal kick. It was almost one of those ones where she wasn't sure whether to have a go at the goals or to cross it in. It ended up just being high and looping and going out for the goal kick. But good to see Ellis bombing forward a bit there. We know she's got good pace. She's good with the ball at her feet. If she can really make Eliadis accountable, that will be a win for Borondara. Two of them just battling it out on the left wing, and it's Eliadis who uh, wins the ball and bombs it forward. Gummer with the header. Callahan. Eliadis again. Trying to make something happen here for South Melbourne, but that's a pass to no one, and Borondara able to sweep in and take possession back. A few heads snapped around looking at each other. Martin Owen Lyons weren't on the same page. Uh, it's interesting, we haven't seen any tactical changes from South Melbourne here. They're reasonably uh, happy at 1-0 down to persist with what they've got, but a second goal you really feel would kill the game at the moment. They're, they can't take too many... Uh, too many chances on letting the game drift as it currently is. No, they, um, they're making some good opportunities, but they've not really got the finishes. We've seen at times as Tay's pressured into knocking the ball back to Lanning. Um, a few times Eliadis, for example, has come into the midfield, but then you need a finisher to put the ball away. And at the moment, Martineau's not really been central enough to help out in that regard. Howes bursting forward. Tay comes across, puts it out for a throw. Tay's had a good game so far today, I think. Um, worked really hard at the centre of defence and shut down quite a lot of those quite potent counter-attacks. Martineau forward to take the throw. Now Howes. Giving a bit of room. Pollock. Back to Howes. Now Eliadis. Trying to find the killer pass. And that one is not it. Out for a goal kick. Cheryl on the sidelines. Thoughts on the first uh, six or seven minutes of the, of the half so far? Um, I think what South Melbourne are doing is they're holding on to the ball a little bit longer, which is great to see them do that. But they're still releasing the ball perhaps a little bit too early, as we could see there with Tiff Eliadis. Didn't really have any other opportunities and pushed it forward, but needs to play to a player. Cavaretta. Now out to Ellis, who's... Back in her defensive half, but looking to work forward here. Just noting here, Alex Gummer in the centre of the park. Potentially a change there from Borondara. We'll see if Gummer does drift back over to that left, but it looks like she is going to move forward for this free kick. And again, an attacking opportunity for Borondara. They're going to leave it to Jensen to take. Jensen hits it high to the top of the box and headed away by Pritchard. Newman... We'll let it run and does get a corner. So an opportunity here for Burundara to swing in another set piece. And they're going to leave it to Jacobs to come over and take. Yeah, they've been doing that consistently all day, having the two different options as far as corner takers go. I'm not too sure what that was there. Just I think she was just applying a bit of pressure with Farquhar just shutting things down for a second. So here's Jacobs now standing over the set piece. Boudreau, Jackson and Cavaretta, the... Targets in the area. In it comes. Batted away by Land. Cavaretta with the follow-up. And that one is blazed again over the bar. So a couple of half chances to start the second half. But after nine minutes, not really much to write home about. On the Jets Fitness scoreboard, it's still Burundara Eagles 1, South Melbourne 0. Yeah, again, one of those um, opportunities for Burundara where the attacker, in this case, Cavaretta, had a little bit more time than she thought. Um, probably could have taken the touch and looked to drive it home. It was in a tough position. But Gummer wins the ball back on that left flank, gets it to Jackson, who's in a bit of traffic. Tay. Now playing it to Jensen. Lines has been tasked with chasing the lost cause up there. Pollock now battling with Callahan. Baker comes in. Jacobs gets it away. Bit of space for Gummer to work with. Hits the long crossfield pass. Too much on that one. And it rears up, but Land able to hold the ball. Of course, Francis Land playing for Bulleen Lines last year was player of the match in the Team App Cup final and kept South Melbourne at bay on that occasion. Today, wearing the South Melbourne colours. And no stranger to 
being able to single-handedly win a game, I suppose, and at the moment, Burundara haven't quite done enough to test her and, and go in search of a second goal. No, they really need to uh, turn the heat up a bit, start getting a few more shots on target, um, just really make South Melbourne start to feel that pressure again like they did early in the first half. Um, they've got another good opportunity here. Jackson can hit this one sweetly. Standing over the ball. So here comes the set piece from Jackson now. Again to the top of the box. Gummer flick header on and that one runs out for a goal kick. Repeating the benches for both sides as we creep closer to the hour mark. Ali Gafer, Sarah Petty, Lucy Johnston and Amy Medwin are the outfielders for Burundara Eagles. And Kayo Kuganyama is on the bench as well, the backup keeper. And then for South Melbourne, Jade Feeks, Nat Brajanovsky, Caitlin Greaser and Jasmine Arizolo. And they've also got Coco Mchstorovic. Ball through. Here's the chance. Eliadis shoots it straight at Lanning. And again, couldn't get the feet right. Couldn't generate any power. It was a great diagonal ball. And Cheryl on the sidelines. South Melbourne won't get too many better chances than that. And they're starting to, to spurn them. It was a great chance that they had that started all the way over here right next to me on the left flank with Jamie Pollock just being able to outstrip the Burundara team for pace and create that opportunity. So I think Burundara probably had a fair few opportunities and South Melbourne less so, but even more pressure on them being 1-0 one, one behind. So a couple of great chances now. Dudley Smith and Eliadis both having a look at one-on-ones and unable to finish. Gummer in a one-on-two. Howes wins the ball. Nowhere to go. And now just prods it down the line. Eliadis has been prominently involved in this match. And the referee almost getting in the way. But all's well that ends well for Baker. And she gets it over to Pollock. Running shoulder to shoulder with Cavaretta. Ellis comes over to help out. And that one takes a, a violent deflection and bounces off the wall over on the outer side of the ground. Really like to feel the things that Jacobs has done today. We just saw another one of those turns on the ball where she just outstripped her opponent. Um, just willing to take on play and look for that extra second option. Um, it's encouraging for Burundara to have a couple of players that can do that. And now, hailing cabs. Which way is it going? Not even out of play. Dudley Smith comes up with the ball. Cavaretta. Back to Jackson. Now Cavaretta again. Pollock is right there on her case. Able to win the ball, but South Melbourne are going to have to concede territory all the way back to their goalkeeper. Land plays it out to the left. Cheel. Now Pollock. Callahan and Cavaretta combine. Win possession back. Ellis. All the way back to Lanning. No nonsense on this occasion. Long ball. And Boudreau. Pulled up, knew she was offside, and it's going to be a South Melbourne ball. She straight away knew it, but it's still a dangerous um, area to test. It's some smart thinking from Anna Lanning because you've got Boudreau and then you've got Newman, who's really, really quick, um, who can just look to get out the back and maybe get onto one of those uh, long kicks and create something. So that time obviously didn't pay off, but it's worth trying, worth trying a few different things if you're Anna Lanning. Newman went for a dash, couldn't find a way past Eliadis. Coming back in for another go, but Eliadis wins the ball and now has a bit of room to run. Dudley Smith breaking, flags up, flags up against Dudley Smith and that ball hit the post in any case, but just couldn't time the run. She was sneaking in from behind the back four and couldn't loop back into an onside position in time. Yeah, couldn't quite get there, but we know she's got that explosive pace and she can really cause a few headaches. So that time, as I said, just offside, um, couldn't quite work her way in, but just can spell a little bit, little bit of trouble for Borondara's defence and they're back four if um, Dudley Smith is able to get through and behind a few times. Almost at the hour mark and South Melbourne now starting to recapture some of that form that saw them end the first 45 that little bit stronger. Controlling a bit more possession here and we've said a number of times that the game is being allowed to drift. Not too many positional changes or really a change in strategy from either team and South Melbourne again allowed to settle into a bit of a a bit of a rhythm here and go in search of an equaliser. There is still a feeling here that a second goal will kill the game off if Burundara do score again, so they've got to be careful. Far mm. Farquhar plays it to Cheel. Pollock back to Farquhar. All of this in very close quarters and they can't keep it under control. It runs out. Yeah, you do just get that feeling that if it's two goals, it will really be curtains. South Melbourne have worked really hard um, and had a few opportunities to equalise, but if it's 2-0, I think Burundara are just going to be too strong and um, just too defensively minded to 
let it let the equaliser come oh, through. Shields under pressure here. Thought about the back header, but the, too far out from goal. And that little prod forward there from Boudreau for Jackson. Land awake to the danger coming out of her line, but um, it would have been a horrible feeling for Shields. She was thinking about loading up for a back header, but 25 metres away from her goalkeeper, just a bit too far. And in the end, goalkeeper did well to come and bail her out of trouble. South Melbourne looking to counter-attack. Martineau venturing forward onto Howe's pass. Now threading through Eliadis, and the flag's up again. And that call must have been a tight one. Eliadis is frustrated and, again, Burundara defence able to trap South Melbourne offside. Yeah, they do, did well there. Martineau was fantastic, I thought. She, was, she lost her footing a little bit but stabilised and just managed to find that extra bit of space. It was a beautiful ball to Eliadis, who was surely offside by the tightest of margins. Um, yeah, I really like that from Martineau. They need to get the ball at her feet a little bit more if they're going to create some more opportunities, South Melbourne, because uh. when she is on form... Um, she's a very hard player to stop. And now Howes getting forward on the right. We've seen this a few times on this occasion. Tay, ball trapped under her feet though. Dudley Smith coming through from the right byline and Lanning stands tall, able to claim the cross. How confident does Anna Lanning look? Like it wasn't the most testing of saves, but every time she just puts the hands out and you just, I think as a Borondara defender, you feel confident that she was going to save it every time. Let's go to Cheryl on the sideline. Cheryl, South Melbourne turning up the heat, looking for an equaliser. Did you have a good view of that offside call against Tiff Eliadis? No, to be honest, I was right up the other end of the pitch where we had the um, competition with Alex Chiel. Um, that was an interesting one there. But I think both teams defensively really holding together pretty well. I know that there have been mistakes here and there, but really quite structured in the way that they're approaching the game. A couple of players warming up at the moment for Burundara. We've got Ali Gafer who's warming Sorry, up. Sorry, Cheryl. We'll just stay with play with South Melbourne at the top of the box. Baker, Eliadis, now Howes, thinking about a long shot, loading up, and that one is floating into the arms of Lanning. Cheryl, back to you. Yep, that's right. Ali Gafer is warming up and Amy Med Medwin as well, both warming up on the sidelines. Thank you, Cheryl, on the sidelines with us. Ball off heads. Boudreau sparking up, sensing an opportunity with a bit of confusion in the South Melbourne defence, and... Pritchard's back pass here has gone behind for a corner. So they win a cheap corner here and a chance to relieve some of the pressure that South Melbourne were building. Yeah, South Melbourne, South Melbourne will be filthy here. It looks like it's going to be Boudreau going over for the corner, along with Amy Jackson. Maybe so a, a short, short quarter corner. variety, Anna. My least favourite type of corner. Um, but, you know, if it's uh, Taron Boudreau, maybe you can really create something out of nothing. Uh, but they're going to look to close that one down pretty quickly at South Melbourne. They're having absolutely none of that. So Jackson is the taker. Hasn't even dropped the ball on the place yet. Referee giving it the hurry up. And after all of that, they are going to go for a conventional ball into the area. So here comes Jackson. Left foot. Wide again. Looking for Boudreau. Crashing through was Pollock. Only as far as Callahan Tried to keep the long shot down and... That one bends wide of the target and out for a goal kick. And we saw Ash Callahan, Team App Cup semi-final, picked out the top left corner with a long shot, so we know that she's dangerous from outside the area. Yeah, she's, I think, a very underrated player in the WPL, Ash Callahan. She just really creates from defence. She's hard-working. She's good at winning the ball. She's quite slight, but she's a very strong player for her size. And, um, yeah, she's a smart footballer and really allows her staying back and playing that defensive midfield role allows Amy Jackson to roam further afield and look for the goals. We've got a substitution coming up here. Cheryl down on the uh, sidelines. It's going to be Burundara making the first change today. Sorry, I'm way too far away for well, you at the moment. It looks like Ali Gafer's coming on. It is, and it's quite, quite an interesting change here. Sky Jensen is coming off, and Ali Gafer coming on. So I wonder what sort of uh, positional change mm -hmm. this might lead to. If any, I hardly think they're going to slot Ali Gafer in at the centre of defence. Maybe this might signal a move for Gummer instead. But uh, Anna, I'll get you to keep an eye on that for the next two minutes as things sort themselves out. And I wonder if uh, Jensen was the first to run out of legs or perhaps Sean Ontong just saw something with South Melbourne starting to turn the screws ever so subtly that he wanted to change to mix it up. Looks as though Gummer is at the heart of defence for now. Playing the ball out to the left. Newman, one-on-one -on -one with Martineau. Now having to concede some territory. Keeps the ball in. That is an adventurous back pass, but all of her teammates were on the same wavelength. Tay, top of the penalty area. Cavaretta, under the pump from Farquhar. Keeps it moving. Gafer tries to keep it in. Into touch. Out for a throw. And so that means it's going to be a South Melbourne ball. Yeah, some risky work there from Newman. She just had to back in her teammates in um, 
Ellis in particular to actually be there and stand tall and stay composed and Tay as well just managed to hook the ball away and gain a little bit of ground but Borondaro just need to settle here because all it takes is one lapse in concentration and all of a sudden the game's back on level pegging. And Boudreau here penalised for snapping at the heels of Alex Cheel. Fans not too enthused about that but it's going to be a South Melbourne free kick. So it looks like Gafer has gone into right back. Tay and Gummer in the middle and Ellis over on the left but we'll wait and see how they defend this set piece because South Melbourne are throwing plenty of numbers forward here still 1-0 down Cheel to the top of the penalty area uncontested header for Jackson only as far as Eliadis Baker keeps it moving Farquhar overlapping on the left stepping back onto the right side now Eliadis swings it to the top of the box Howes trying to get there before Newman puts a foot in but Burundara will come away with the ball and then Newman, that's going to be deflected out towards the corner flag. And it actually goes out for a throw. So not the worst result for South Melbourne. They get a chance to try and pin Burundara in. Yeah, Newman's quick, but she just held onto the ball for a little bit too long there. Needed to look to get the uh, escaping kick out a little bit quicker. Ball takes a deflection to the top of the box. Jacobs. Risky pass, but Caparetta makes it work. And now Jackson and things are starting to open up. Plenty of... South Melbourne players backtracking here, but Cavaretta, long loping strides, chance to chase Cheel, and her back pass is good enough to get to land without any purple shirts intervening. Pollock now looking to drive it back in South Melbourne's direction. Eliadis chases down the first touch, now swinging the ball over the top. Pollock still got run in the legs. And no nonsense from Tay puts it out for a throw. Probably worth noting as well that Liv Ellis um, is now left back. I believe Gummer was there before. So uh, just that little bit of switch and keeping the pace on the same side. Gummer in the centre now. So got that pace with Newman and Ellis just Thro on the left flank. Throw to the byline. Hooked back by Lyons. Dudley. And now Pollock taking on Cabaretta. No nonsense from Gay for now. And that one is behind for a corner. So an opportunity for South Melbourne here with a corner kick. And time's starting to become the enemy as well. 68 minutes ticked by. Just uh, taking a moment. It's an important corner here for South Melbourne. As the day's still quite warm and um, if your players start to tie, you just need to try and get a cheap goal from the set piece. Dudley Smith to the near post. Eliadis with a header. It's on the line and Lanning comes up with the ball. Sea of legs and the goalkeeper diving at the feet, able to make the save. Eliadis had the header, unable to steer at either side of the goalkeeper though and Lanning has been impassable so far. She's done well, Anna Lanning. That would have been a difficult one to save. And if Eliadis gets within that 18-yard box, she's often lethal, so... Lanning did well, um, put her body on the line and came up with the ball. And that's, that's encouraging for your defence when your keeper's willing to put their body on the line. It is a sign of the trend that's emerging that South Melbourne are just getting on top here. Tiff Eliadis right in front of us now as Burundara have the throw. You can see just a bit of a frustrated look on her face. The ball was there but couldn't get a powerful header behind it. And who knows what could have happened if Lanning hadn't grabbed it first time. So many players around the ball that could have been deflected in, could have been kicked into an attack at a ricochet in for a goal. Well played by the Burundara keeper. South Melbourne will feel as though they're getting closer and closer. Howes now breaking, plays it round Tay. This is Carol Howes streaming into the area. Great chance for South Melbourne. Gafer gets across, can't stop Howes. It's 1-1, what a powerhouse goal. And they're level South Melbourne. This grand final's got more twists and turns yet. It's Burundara Eagles 1, South Melbourne 1. What a sensational run from Carol Howes. She's been making some really good cutting runs down that right flank and no one could stop her there. Four defenders were coming in to try and stop her. She got the shot away just in time and all Anna Lanning could do was look as the ball went past her into the back of the net. Sensational finish, brilliant blistering run from Carol Howes. And South Melbourne, they look like they were starting to get on top and now, all of a sudden, this game is back on level pegging. 70th minute the goal. There's 20 to go. Cheryl, we saw it coming. And Carol Howes going her own way to score a sensational goal. It was brilliant. She had Brittany Dudley-Smith running down the sidelines with her as well. She had an opportunity to draw a player away, but she went all the way. Got a substitution right in front of me at the moment as well. Alicia Newman's come off, and we've got Amy Medwin coming on. Thank you, Cheryl. Down on the sidelines, 20 to go. Scores level. 
I don't think either team wants to go to extra time today, but just a reminder that if we are level after 90 minutes, 15 each way, half an hour of extra time, and then penalties if we're still level after all of that. And really, Burundara, they let the game drift. We spoke about the substitution to bring Gummer into the centre of defence. They were trying to do something about it, but South Melbourne, they've just very steadily applied pressure behind since the fourth minute. And 66 minutes later, they find themselves back on level terms. Well, brilliant effort from South Melbourne. We saw they got the game back on their own terms. They are playing the game the way they wanted it to be played. And, and now they're breaking on the left. Pollock running shoulder to shoulder with Tay. Keeps her feet. Tay got a nick towards the byline. Lanning comes across. Puts it out. South Melbourne feeling the momentum now. This occasion, though, loose touch and Cabaretta can't clear her lines. Sean Ontong prowling the touchline, and you can see his bench. There, Some of them are actually perched, standing on the bench to stay in the shade at the moment. The shadows, which started pretty much hard up against the uh, broadcast side sideline, are now creeping out onto the ground. But half the pitch is still very much bathed in afternoon sunlight here in Melbourne. Baker, back to Chiel. And they're going to have a minute to work the ball out here, South Melbourne, as they've done for at least half of this match since they started working and Eliadis is going to dash down the left flank. Well, they thought they had a throw. Not so, Burundara. Eliadis cuts back onto the right foot. Needs to pick out a target with the cross. Jacobs defending it well. Jackson. Now Gafer. Looking for the ball to sit up so she can hit it down the line, but that's gone straight to Farquhar. Doesn't relieve the pressure. South Melbourne, 1-1. Maybe got the sniff of more goals in the nostrils. Gummer. Takes it out to right back. Gafer. Again, straight to Pollock. They're coughing possession up Burundara. Eliadis now. Trying to find a way past Jacobs, who defends it. Now Boudreau. Little step to try and beat Pritchard, but Pritchard has just got that extra metre of advantage and plays it back to Francis Land. Boudreau just needs some support up forward. Um, we saw Newman was playing more as a winger and she's come off now, but there was two, three defenders on her at all times. Pedro. Ball over the top's going to sit up for Dudley Smith here. Tried to poke it first time with the goalkeeper. Out of her line and it's gone wide of the post. It was clever thinking there from Dudley Smith, trying to catch Anna Lanning flat-footed, but just couldn't steer it goalwards and it's out for a goal kick. Dangerous moments for Burundara. They're looking shaken. They need to get back on top in the midfield because South Melbourne are really controlling the game in the centre of the park. You need your players like Jack, Amy Jackson in particular to really just stamp herself on this game and win some physical possession in the, in the centre because at the moment it's all South Melbourne. I think if you were to pick the best two players on the pitch at the moment, you'd probably have to say it's Pollock and Howes, Anna. So I'm with you there. The central midfielders from South Melbourne are taking over. Throw in. Jacobs. Tried to find Callahan, but it's gone straight to Baker. 50-50 ball. Jacobs again. Jackson on this occasion. Gay for breaking on the right. Long ball. Looking for Boudreau. Cleared away by Cheel. Now Baker. Left-footed cross. Trying to find Dudley Smith. Good control to bring it down. Trying to tee up lines. Jackson there. Back to Pollock now. Scoops it over the top. Eliadis back to goal. Laying it off again, but... Pollock can't follow it up. Jacobs is there. Slight challenge coming in from Pritchard. Boudreau keeping her feet. Now playing a diagonal ball. Medwin lurking. Headed away by Martineau. Eliadis tried to turn Gummer. Ball wouldn't sit. Wins a foul. Crowd shows their appreciation. And Alex Gummer there didn't appear to do a great deal wrong, but this is a free kick. Oh, a dangerous position as Probably well. Probably really the first in shooting range for either side. We've seen a lot of wide set pieces for crosses, but... If we've got a super boot here, this one could be a direct shot on goal. Tiff Eliadis will back herself to score a goal from just about anywhere on the field. Um, she's, been, she's won the golden boot plenty of times. She's been right up there again this year. So I she think she'll have a crack. Well, she didn't have the happiest memories of the 2013 grand final here on this ground. She'd love to make a statement right here, put her team in front. It's Eliadis drifting it, looking for the top left, but that one goes high and wide and out for a goal kick. Just had to find that extra little bit of depth in the kick, and when that happens, your accuracy tends to waver a bit. Really need to see Amy Jackson step up. She's looking frustrated before. The ball wasn't coming to her feet. Um, I don't know if you put her into a more forward position, like play her as a true number 10, and look, 
really try to get her involved. As I say that, she of course wins the ball. Um, but they need her to really step up and make something happen in this next 10, 15 minutes just to really try and get the ball back, the game back on their terms. She's, you know, been judged the best player in the league and um, if she can find an extra gear, it will go a long way to breaking the deadlock. Boudreau given a talking to by the referee, but no card. Long ball from Pritchard. Eliadis leaping for the header. Flicks it on. Gummer. Ellis. Plenty of time to think through a pass. Sent it down the line. Pritchard here being chased by Boudreau. Got to be careful here. Boudreau can try and pick her pocket and does. And Tarin Boudreau is away from the left. Trying from the tight angle and land. Comes up with a save with the legs that deflected up and she grabbed it with her arms. And I think uh, Jessie Pritchard owes thanks to her goalkeeper there for getting her out of trouble. We saw that coming here over on the flank, Anna, and uh, Taryn Boudreau, I guess, when you're out there on the pitch and you don't know she's lurking up on you, anything's possible. She's a super player, and we, we know that. She, um, she can pick anyone's pocket, and you just have to play it safe when she's near you because you only got to slip up one little bit and she'll steal the ball off you and run and it'll be in the back of the net before you know it. But sensational save from Land, who I think's had a really good game early on. She got put under a lot of pressure, but since then I think she's really stood up and she's been willing to come off her line when she has to. She's made some good saves. She's been happy to have the ball come back to her when South are looking to set up and play the ball out of defence. She's had a really strong game um, since that goal was conceded. She's really worked her way into it, I guess, as her team has. Ticking up to 77 minutes. I feel like a goal either way now might be the winner, especially given the tempo of the match is continuing to slow. Free kick Burundara. Jackson to the right side of the area. Allowed to bounce. Medwin's there. Land is there and came through. Used her body. And I think the foul Free has kick. been paid against Medwin for a loose boot hanging out there in any case. Cheryl on the sidelines. Tension starting to build here with the game 1-1 and just over 10 minutes plus stoppage to go. Yeah, I can see that both of these teams really want this match at the end of it, which is, uh, you don't need to say that out loud, I suppose. Amy Jackson, beautiful ball in then, just floated perfectly for my money. But I think Jessie Pritchard, as much as she maybe made a little bit of a mistake earlier on, can't think Sorry, enough. Cheryl will stay with play. Dudley Smith chasing down Gummer here out of her line. Lanning makes the save. Cheryl, back to you. Pritchard has saved so many balls, getting um, Tareen Boudreau off the ball as well. So I think she's had an excellent game so far. Bouncing ball on this occasion. Boudreau trying to bring it down and does. Pritchard right there on her hammer. Boudreau trying to keep it in Burundara possession. Jacobs sideways pass to no one. South Melbourne come away with the ball. Callahan does well to intercept. Does indeed. Medwin now. Howes charging through and wins a foul. So Medwin on a couple of occasions just late to the ball, leaving a boot in and giving away a couple of little fouls. Nothing too sinister. And I'm a little bit surprised, Anna. We haven't seen more fresh legs coming into the game. Maybe Dude, both teams time. yeah, thinking about extra time already. If either team can score here, though, you really would think it would be the match winner. Even with as much time left as there is. Eliadis wants to do something about that. Crossing to the top of the area. Volleyed away by Gafer. Eliadis coming in again. Battling Ellis. Winning the ball. Ellis back in for seconds. Gummer left it behind. Safri lines now. Edge of the penalty area. Callahan doing the defending. Lyons picks her pocket. Hard up against the byline and it's deflected out for a throw. And they defended as a team there. It was one beat and the next one stepped up and Burundara, three or four of them end up clearing their lines. Just sort of a bit of an improvised defence there. They, a couple of them had to take on Eliadis and then Callahan had to go in as well. It's uh, hard work for him at the moment, the Burundara defence. Ball wide on the right. Martino to Eliadis. Trying to find a way back to Nat Martino and Callahan diving in front of the cross. Puts it behind for a corner. Another dangerous area here for uh, for Burundara. South Melbourne, if they can whip in a nice corner, it's uh, going to be very dangerous. So waiting now for Farquhar to come over and take the corner for South Melbourne. Time ticking away here. Just a reminder, we will have extra time if we're level after 90 minutes in this Sportsmart WPL Grand Final. Farquhar taking plenty of time. We'll take a long run up. Natural left footer, of course. Plenty of South Melbourne players to aim for. Here it comes. High to the back post. Pollock the target. Gets a header on it, but straight into the wheelhouse for Lanning. And she's able to hold it on the bounce. Kicks it out of the traffic. Turns away a little bit disgusted with the attempt to pump it forward. I think she was looking for Boudreau there, and it just came off the side of the boot a little bit and went out to the almost the opposite flank. In any case, deflected out off Pollock into touch, and it's going to be... A Burundara throw. 
Gafer. One of two new faces into the game for, for Burundara in this second half. Again, ball into touch, out for a throw. They've still got Sarah Petty and Lucy Johnston of their outfielders if they want to turn to one of them. Gafer again. Volleyed away. Lines to Eliadis. Little blind turn, leaving it for Lines again. Taking on Callahan. Callahan with a slight challenge, puts it out for a throw. Interesting to see, as we've said, Alex Gummer, she's been moved into that centre of defence, but at the same time it means that you're not going to see so many charging runs forward from her, which I thought had the potential to be quite dangerous. Um, they're really looking to try and settle with her and Tay in the middle. Howes, Martineau waving for a long diagonal ball down the right. Instead, ducks back in, takes the short pass from Howes, who's going to overlap herself. Dudley Smith looks central, back to Martineau, plays it over to the right. Howes, bit of time to take control of the ball. Ellis right there. Howes with the nutmeg into the penalty area, trying to square it. And Gummer sees it behind for a corner. Carol Howes taking this game by the scruff of the neck, trying to win it single-handedly here for South Melbourne. She's had an inspired second half. She's been fantastic. She showed a few little things in the first half, but she's just come into her own um, in the second. It's just so many dashing runs down that right wing. And she's just got such a presence in defence as well that you know if Boudreaux's going to look to cut back, she's going to have to get past her as well. So Farquhar to take the corner again. 1-1 inside the last 10 minutes now. South Melbourne looking to overturn a 1-0 deficit. They've been behind from the 4th minute to the 70th when they drew level. Here it comes from Farquhar. This one again to the back post. Pollock getting up. Gummer with the first header on the ball though. And now an opportunity sliding wide of the right post from Pritchard. And the big central defender didn't know a great deal about where it was going, but steered it just wide of the post. Yeah, just wide. Another dangerous moment there for Borondara. Just seeing Alex Chill, the centre of defence, the skipper, just absolutely screaming to her teammates, revving them up, doing everything they can to try and snag a goal in, um, in the last 10 minutes or so of this half. Interesting that Gummer's pulled rank on taking the goal kick here. It was still a fairly low, bouncing one. And Jacobs almost caught in possession by Lyons. It's going to deflect to Dudley Smith. Callahan backtracking, trying to find a way to win the ball. Eliadis pokes it back to Dudley Smith. South Melbourne with numbers forward. Dudley Smith taking a long shot in that one again. Not a great deal of venom behind it. Easy pickings for Lanning. But at the same time, South Melbourne just look like they've got that extra gear going forward. You've got, uh, you've got both Eliadis and Dudley Smith really creating and making some opportunities happen as we see uh, Ellis's ball just strays out for a throw-in. You just got so many options, South Melbourne, at the moment in terms of scoring that Burundara just uh, seem like it's Boudreaux or Bust at the moment in terms of when they go forward. It's just that extra gear that South Melbourne are playing with at the moment. It's making things very difficult and putting a lot of pressure on this Burundara defence in midfield. Jackson with the ball in the centre of the park. Got a bit of space to roam here, Amy Jackson, and she's got three breaking ahead of her. Tried to find the one on the right, which was Cavaretta, but intercepted by Cheel. Now Baker trying to spray a long ball of her own. Flag is up against Pollock. And the crowd was rising because they saw Pollock with a metre of space and Dudley Smith and Eliadis in the middle, but it's offside. When she gets a metre of space, Pollock, we've seen today that it very quickly becomes four or five metres, such as her pace. Um, Amy Jackson clearly frustrated with herself there, not able to loop the ball just over the top, um, searching for that pass. She got herself in a bit of space and didn't work out that time, but that's what she needs to keep doing, keep winning the ball and finding space and working it forward. Medwin, haven't had a chance to see her really show her stuff on the ball here, but... Taking Doing on well. Martineau, now taking on Howes, trying to do it all herself, and the ball deflects to Cheel. She just kicks to clear the lines. Eliadis coming oh. through on Gummer, and this was going to be a Burundara free kick. Jeez, that was sore looking. Um, it happened right in front of us oh, uh, she's on the wing. Alex Gummer, she's a tough customer. Tough customer yep. But a um, bit of a clash of heads with Eliadis. Nothing intentional, they were both just going for the ball. But uh, Alex Gummer, it looked uh, like it could have been sore for a second there, but the Burundara skippers just got to her feet and carried on back to centre back. Gafer was caught in possession. South Melbourne with a chance to build. Eliadis outside of the foot through ball. Couldn't find its way through to Pollock. Gafer's there. Now Cavaretta trying to spin on the ball. Boudreau under pressure from Cheel. Still got it to Jackson. Back to Cavaretta. And now Rani Cavaretta trying to thread a pass for Medwin. Two Tasmanians trying to link up here in the Victorian Women's Premier League Grand Final. And now South Melbourne clear it and Pollock a chance to drive it forward once again. Lines 
Pollock, I think, had just about run out of petrol tickets there. And in any offside. case, Eliadis was coming back from an offside position. Cheryl on the sidelines. Will we get a late goal or do you think we're going to extra time? The way it looks at the moment to me is that South Melbourne are really trying to win this in regular time. I think for Burundara, maybe they think their chances in extra time are a little bit better because they don't seem to be pushing as hard or South Melbourne aren't letting them go as hard. Jamie Pollock's been looking in distress for a little bit now, so I'm surprised that we're not looking for a sub yet from the South bench. Here's a ball down the left. Gamma venturing forward. Less than five minutes to go now. Taking on Martino. Can't find a way past her. Land, first time clearance, only as far as Jackson. One on two, in comes Lines, and the numbers went out for South Melbourne. Howes is there, plays it back to Safri Lines. She's going to hit a long pass here. Dudley Smith and Pollock trying to go to the well to put some pressure on Tay. It's a risky pass, but it found its way to Ellis, and well, Ellis is a very cool player, able to steer it to Gummer. And now sweeping long pass. Bit of a hopeful ball and Cheel has actually steered it back goalwards with land out. And the good news, if there is any for South Melbourne, is that it wasn't on target. It went behind for a corner. And that was, well, we saw a, an amazing own goal in the Team App Cup final. Here in the grand final, we nearly saw something similar. Well, just uh, Alex Chill, it's not often at all that she makes a, defen uh, a defensive error. That was just a little bit of a lapse her and land just not quite getting the path of communication right. Um, Alex Gummer uh, passes a little bit long and very nice result for her coming out with the corner and all of a sudden Burundara out of nothing have got a really good opportunity from the set piece. So Jacobs to take. Burundara looking to capitalise on that defensive slip. In it comes, central position, Land lost it in the air, managed to flail it away. Was reaching up more in hope than anything but able to get a decisive touch and South Melbourne clear their lines. Very nervous and difficult looking into the sun with the ball coming in from that corner as well. And now South Melbourne putting a boot on the ball. Chance to steady again. Extra time looming here at the Venado Club. As we've now crossed 87 and a half minutes on the Jets fitness scoreboard, it's still 1-1. Martineau to take the throw. Lines. Eliadis. Can't find a way through to the right. Kind deflection, gives her another go. Now playing it to Dudley Smith. And a good challenge coming in from Tay. Backtracking and putting it behind for a corner. Tremendous challenge from Tay. She was coming in from a really awkward position. You get that, there's really no margin for error coming in for a tackle like that. You slip up at all and it's penalty time and you could potentially get carded. Well, so it must have been offside because Burundara restarting play from the top of their penalty area. Either way, it was a fantastic challenge. Though another thing to note, we said earlier, Eliadis dropping into midfield a bit, and she's just really having an influence when she does that. She's just so good with the ball at her feet. Pedro, nice turn, gets away from Pritchard. Opportunity for Burundara here. Howes backtracking, gives away a foul. In a very dangerous area as well. We're almost uh, in shooting range, you think, for someone like an Amy Jackson, Tay. Well, this is a big opportunity for Burundara. Like we said, we haven't seen too many free kicks in shooting range. Most of them have been wide on the flanks. We saw Eliadis hit one high and wide earlier in this half. And now South Melbourne are going to show plenty of respect here to Amy Jackson. They've got four in the wall. Francis Land barking the instructions. And Amy Jackson, the gold medalist, the leading scorer in the Sportsmart Women's Premier League. I think the only way it could get any better is if she scored the match-winning goal in the grand final. And this late, it almost certainly would be. Huge moment coming up here for Burundara to complete the perfect season. Here's Jackson over the free kick. It's floating and it's easy for Land in the end. Grabbed it first time. Had Medwin and Tay closing in, waiting for any spill. But in the end, equal to the task. And now South Melbourne looking to break on the counter-attack. Howes, good touch to keep the ball in on halfway. Wins a throw. And now South Melbourne committing numbers forward. They've played like a team that doesn't want this to go to extra time. They're trying to win it within the 90. Pollock there, trying to flick it to her advantage. Can't do so. It's out for a throw deep in the corner. Yeah, Amy Jackson just uh, getting enough lift on that ball for coming in with the left foot to challenge Land, but Land was well and truly up to it and made it look very, very easy to take the save. Just 15 seconds of regular time to go. Fourth official will let us know how long left in a moment. Goal here would just about win it. Dudley Smith left it behind. Pedro now takes the ball inside a defensive half. Playing it, Jackson. Lung-busting run, but couldn't get there before Cheel. 
out for a throw. Cheryl on the sidelines. How many minutes of stoppage to end the game? Three minutes of stoppage. So the way that both teams are playing, I suppose, has some opportunities out there. Three minutes for someone to become a grand final hero. Three minutes for someone to write themselves into the history books as the match winner. Otherwise, we have an extra half an hour. And it's going to be, as you say, Anna, South Melbourne ball. Lines. Has got better as the game has gone on, Safri Lines. Ellis, though, keeping possession. Boudreau keeps it in. Passing in close quarters, Burundara. Howes put her body on the line. You heard the clash of boots there. Pollock, little sideways pass. Medwin intercepts. Callahan over the top. No one running after it. Pritchard plays it back. And now Baker. Eliadis. DeMartineau on the right. South Melbourne's turn to think about going end-to-end -end on the counter-attack. Trying to find a way over the top. Deflects off the head of Gummer. Dudley Smith plays it out to the right. Pollock has almost got nothing left there. You see she's pulled the socks all the way down. Trying to go to the last reserves of energy for one final burst. And lines. It's out off Ellis. Time the enemy for both sides here. Desperate to find a winner. Now over the top from Baker. Pollock wrestling against Gummer. Doesn't want to give away a corner. Last touch is off the South Melbourne player. And it's gone behind for a goal kick. And with each stoppage, we crawl closer and closer. We've played a minute and a half of the allocated three minutes of stoppage. Gummer's going to take the goal kick from here. So you have to think she's going to look to go along and see if they can get one last good opportunity, one roll of the dice tail. And similarly, South Melbourne will be hoping that they can trap it and take it back with interest. Good flick header on from Jackson. Pritchard coming through and just got body checked there from Boudreau as she stooped to the ball. And so it's a foul and a chance again for South Melbourne to drive it forward. Beaten by four goals on both occasions in the home and away season. They've done well. They have done well. It's only 1-1. And it looks like we're going to have 30 more minutes to find ourselves a grand final winner. Unless South Melbourne can produce something right here. Driven long by Baker. To the top of the area. Allowed to bounce. And hooked away by Callahan. It was almost scenes reminiscent of 2013 when Sandringham stole it at the death. South Melbourne would love to turn the tables. Gafer, nice touch. Passing the ball now to Cavaretta. Driving from deep. Pass intercepted by Howes, but Jackson right there to make a contest. Shouts for offside. They're not going to pay it because Burundara have got away with the ball. Into their attacking half. Pritchard. Now plays it to Ellis. And now Jackson. Cavaretta's breaking. Jackson trying to find her. Well read by Cheel. Should be just about time, you'd think. Cleared away. Fourth official Kate Jakovic there telling Sean Ontong to get back in his technical area. And there it is. We can't split them at the end of 90 minutes. It's been a sensational second half of the grand final. The game coming to life with South Melbourne fighting back to life. 70th minute through Carol Howes. And in the Sportsmart Women's Premier League decider, we're going to need two 15-minute halves of extra time to sort it out. Live and exclusive here on FFV Team App. Cheryl Downs on the sidelines. Your thoughts at the end of 90 minutes? It finishes 1-1. I think it's probably finished with a fair result at the moment. I, I think both teams started out with some nerves, but South Melbourne have really come back into the match after being a goal down. So I'm just going to try and listen in to what they say at this little break. Thank you, Cheryl. Anna Harrington, thoughts on the first 90? Fantastic. Really hotly contested game. I think I've got to agree with Cheryl. Um, one all's a pretty fair scoreline at this point. Um, South Melbourne have actually probably controlled more of the game if you look at it now. Um, yeah, just been a fantastic game of uh, game of Premier League football, and you could the crowd here probably couldn't ask for much more. Um, as I said, South Melbourne really ramping things up, looking like they've got that extra gear going forward, and Burundara just managing that defence, just really working hard to keep things level late on. Thank you, Anna Harrington. Thank you for your analysis of the match so far. We hope you're enjoying the coverage of the Victorian Women's Premier League Grand Final, the Sportsmart WPL. And we are going to continue the action. Two 15-minute halves of extra time coming up very soon here live and exclusive on FFV Team App. Stay with us here and we'll rejoin you after a brief musical interlude as the action continues. Searching for a premier on the Jets Fitness scoreboard after 90 minutes. Borandara Eagles 1, South Melbourne 1. Welcome back to live coverage of the Sportsmart Women's Premier League Grand Final. Extra time about to kick off. 
It's 1-1 at full time. Teo Pelizzeri, Anna Harrington and Cheryl Downs with you for live and exclusive coverage on FFV Team App. South Melbourne to kick us off in extra time and Burundara are attacking the creek end. So they're going in the same direction as they were in the second half. Anna Harrington, as we start the first half of extra time, is that a factor or is it uh, simply a, a matter of South Melbourne just trying to continue on the positive momentum that they ended the game with? Uh, well, you're looking at Burundara already. They're looking very active straight away from this kickoff, just trying to create some opportunities. Pritchard rising high, heading it down. Cheel under the pump. And now Johnston coming in, gives away a foul. Ball was in the net, but it won't count. And Lucy Johnston, who came on for Ash Callahan during the break at the end of 90 minutes, instantly... Uh, a threat in this match. Bit of a don't argue. She just gave her the full shove in the chest. And I think the referee straight away was like, oh, you're not getting away with that one. But it's exciting for Borondara early on. They looked almost stagnant in that second half. And straight away, they're looking to move the ball, looking to create and start something. That's what they've got to do. They've got to use their run and move the ball and try and actually create some pressure on South Melbourne because South were really able to use that stifling, short passing style of play, high, high pressing game. And... Borondara just needs to get the ball in space and enable their runners to have an impact. Pedro back to goal, passing it to Cavaretta. Now crossfield pass, looking for Medwin, can't get there. Eliadis comes away with the ball and Ellis was committed forward, perhaps caught out of position here. Eliadis though, running and Medwin backtracking, trying to cover. Eliadis holds it up, crossfield pass behind Baker and it's intercepted by Cavaretta. So we've got an interesting situation here where Burundara have made all three of their substitutions and South Melbourne have yet to turn to the bench. We'll cross down to Cheryl on the sidelines in just a moment. But repeating that sub at the end of the 90 minutes, Ash Callahan off and Lucy Johnston coming on. Straight away looking more dangerous, Burundara, that they've got two players really playing forward and even Ellis is bombing forward. Let's go to Cheryl on the sideline. Cheryl, are you surprised it was Ash Callahan that made way there at the end of the 90 minutes? Yeah, I am in a little way. I think Ash Callahan's been playing quite well. She's been pulling up a, a lot of the players, some really great tackles. But in saying that, I think Lucy Johnson's already come on board and she's started doing some good things. There are some concerns, I suppose, with the South Melbourne depth. I'm not sure how much they have on their bench. They have yet to make a substitution yet. Um, we know that they've got some good players there, but none yet to take the field. Well, I suppose they've got two uh, defenders Defenders there in Jade Feeks and Nat Brajanovsky, so perhaps no surprise there that uh, neither of those two have come on with the defence holding up quite well. Pollock, wide on the left. Wonder if just a, a little break here will see her continue to make those runs and all the hard work that she's done so far through the first 90. Jacobs to Gaifer, trying to find a pass and thread it through to Boudreau, wrestling against Howes, and Howes, the goal scorer for South Melbourne, caught in possession. Boudreau prevails, trying to play it through. Johnston. The fresh legs taking on Alex Cheel. Cheel trying to find a way back into the contest and does well. The South Melbourne captain winning the ball and able to clear the lines. Finding Pollock. And now Farquhar to Pollock. Keeping it in. Hard up against the sideline. Lines. Leaves it for Farquhar again. And now out for a throw off Jacobs. How classy a player is Alex Chill. She just does it over and over again. She was in quite a difficult position there against Johnston. Um, could have easily lost the ball or given away a foul. But just did everything right to win the ball and get it out of danger. She's just got such a cool head under pressure. And she's just been a rock in defence for them all year. Running through the rest of that South Melbourne bench, Caitlin Greaser can play as a forward. Jasmine Aritzolo, a forward or a winger. And then Koko Mostorovic, a backup goalkeeper. So... Two central defenders on the bench is probably one of the reasons that South Melbourne haven't turned to the substitutions just yet. No one's hurt, and the team on the pitch is doing the job at the moment. Dudley Smith, her miss in a one-on-one -on -one in the seventh minute. Seems like an eternity ago now. And that hook away from Ellis is out for a throw. And repeating the three players to leave the game for Burundara, Sky Jensen, Ash Callahan, and Alicia Newman taken off through the second half. Pollock. Trying to take it past Gaifer. Ball deflects to Cavaretta. She's trying to outrun Howes here, but Howes comes in shoulder to shoulder. Does well and gets it to her teammate in Farquhar. Trying for a 1-2. Loopy pass. Brings Cavaretta back into play. And now Jackson. Cool head on the ball. Playing it to Jacobs. Passes to Tay. Got to be careful. That was a loose touch and almost put Pollock through. Tay goes back. Wins the ball legally. Jacobs now. Boudreau. Back to Jackson. Jackson threads it through the middle. Boudreau again, trying for a long shot, trying to catch out. Oh, it's an amazing goal. And Taryn Boudreau 
from an absolute mile out has put Burundara 2-1 up in the grand final. That's the sort of moment of inspiration that can win you a premiership. Taron Boudreau scores. And in the 95th minute, it's Burundara Eagles 2, Burundara South Eagles. Melbourne 1. She's demonised South Aaron Melbourne every Burundara. time she's played them. She was averaging two goals against them. And Taryn Boudreau with an absolute world-class finish. She was holding up the play, looking for an option. Saw that it wasn't really there and thought, maybe I'll have a go. Lands a shorter keeper. And she just placed it perfectly. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better finish from your number one forward and just it was just fantastic and that's what the crowd here has come to see they've come to see the best of victorian football and the best of the imports and taran bedreau is the cream of the crop cheryl downs that's turned the game on its head south melbourne had all that momentum and one super strike from boudreau has turned it all around uh, yeah, I very much look forward to seeing the replay of that one. South Melbourne has still got plenty of time, so they just need to settle and keep playing the game that they've been Lions playing. And put into the, the area, on. Gummer with a header, and it's in! It went over the line, it's an own goal to Alex Gummer, and it's 2-2 in the grand final. South Melbourne level almost straight away, and nothing that Anna Lanning could do about it on the line. A moment of inspiration cancelled out by a moment of madness. And it's Burundara Eagles 2, South Melbourne 2. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, just came out of nowhere, to be honest. Anna Lanning absolutely disgusted. Burundara just came out flying out of the blocks with a worldie to put themselves in front. And then, as you say, Tay, a moment of madness. And all of a sudden, it's back on level pegging. And Burundara with the work to do. Amy Jackson kicks things off. So the cross taking a looping header and falling in the back of the net. And I, we, we have a GoPro attached behind the, uh, the, go, the goal there, so if it's got enough battery in it, I'm not sure it does, but that will make for good viewing later on. Amazing, 2-2 now, and back on level terms. And Burundara, who might have thought that the super strike from Boudreaux was enough, have to go in search of a third now. Ellis against Howes, driven down the line. Cheryl on the sidelines. It's all happening here in extra time. <laughs> I think I called it. I just said that South Melbourne, they're playing the right game and having the ball in that box. That's exactly the spot that they need to do. I think we're just about to have our first substitution for South Melbourne as well. We've got Jade Fika is coming on and we've got Lisa Farquhar is coming off. So defender replaces a defender and Lisa Farquhar has given South Melbourne plenty down the left and was prominently involved in that equalising goal. Yeah, she's uh, worked really hard, I think. Just goes and goes and goes, really persistent. Her run's been really good, and I can imagine she'll be absolutely stuffed because both the fullbacks of both teams have had to work really hard today with plenty of width um, in both teams' game plans. And Jade Feeks, who was part of the NTC last year, has been a, a bit part player for South Melbourne through this season, comes into a grand final. Great ball from Boudreaux. Now a chance for Johnston! Hits the woodwork, and it stays out. Ball still alive. Medwin can't take it away. And Land comes through and rips it off her boot. And Lucy Johnston nearly made it 3-2. And now South Melbourne looking to press in the other direction. Feeks straight onto the pitch, her first touch. Gummer comes through. You can tell with the players tiring, the game has opened up. Goal scoring chances galore. And Lucy Johnston rattling the crossbar with a great shot. Just couldn't put it in. A fantastic effort. She was under pressure on the angle, just rattled off a shot, and it nearly got deflected back in as well. Amy Jackson was doing everything she could to try and get a foot to it. But Land, to her credit, just managed to keep a little bit of composure and managed to grab the ball and work it out to safety. But, yeah, it just shows that when your legs are getting a bit tired, when there's that intensity of the grand final, anything can really happen, and... Geez, you could even have a couple more goals in this extra time. So, repeating that substitution, South Melbourne's first. Lisa Farquhar on. Jade Feeks has come on. Ball out to the left. Pollock. And the offside flag is up. Not sure who it was against there, but may well have been Pollock. It's going to be a Burundara ball. And the first half of extra time steadily ticking away. We've now played 99 minutes. Six to go until they switch ends. Tay to take. Just outside a defensive penalty area. Cheel. Cavaretta. And wins a foul off Lines. Lines has made way as a sub in a number of games for South Melbourne in the second half of the year, but she's actually got better as the match has worn on, has become more and more prominently involved. Worked really hard. Jackson just puts the ball in. But Howes really has that one covered. Pollock with the attempted header. Dudley Smith now. Lines over the top. And Eliadis must have uh, very slenderly been offside. 
Kicks that ball away, and we haven't seen a card yet today. Tempting fade a little bit there. Well, I don't think it should be. We've seen the, nah. the referee, Daniel Anderson, show a bit of leniency mm. on this warm afternoon. And again, just a talking to, maybe a last warning here. And any more time wasting might result in the first yellow card of the match. And why would you time waste? They've had the momentum for plenty of it. So I think you've got to give Tiff Eliadis the benefit of the doubt. Just a bit of frustration. Cabaretta, wide on the right. Crossing it to the top of the box. Baker is there. Clears the ball away. In front of the South Melbourne bench, Pollock. Does well to keep it in, Pollock. Oh, it is in. A few players stopped, but it's keep Play going. Useful. Eliadis brings it down. Battling against Tay. Pollock there again, full of running. Jacobs, only as far as lines. Baker. Cavaretta put a boot in. And now Jacobs to Tay. Under pressure, though. Players closing in. And that one is out for a throw. Cheryl, which, which team has the upper hand at the moment? Both of them were rattled by goals so close together. Who is actually on top? I can't see either team on top at the moment, to be honest. I think they're both pretty even right now. I think either team can lift it up as well. Burundara throughout the game have been really probably the better team, but South Melbourne are being able to pick it up and bring it back. So we're ticking down towards halftime and extra time at the moment. Gafer hurls it down the line. Cheel chasing. Passes it back to Land. She's going to switch flanks here. Martin knows the option and instead turns and goes down the middle. Dangerous pass. Jackson was first to it but couldn't control the ball. Howes now to Safri Lines. She's going to play it to Dudley Smith. And keeps it moving. Feeks working her way out to the right. And no power behind the cross and Lanning able to come out and take the ball. Got a feel for Anna Lanning with the goals that have happened to her today. One, she couldn't really do anything about. And the second, it just... the. Um, own goal off Gummer almost deflected off her back. It was She's really had a rough one in terms of the goal she's copped because I think other than that, she's been very, very solid. Um, a very good custodian for Borondara today. So she'd be pretty filthy that two goals have got past her, I think. And has had to come to the rescue on a couple of occasions as well in one-on-one -on -one situations. South Melbourne, though, won't mind any means to score against this top team, Borondara. And at the moment, it's level 2-2. Land almost lost the ball under her feet again. A central pass out from the back, and Baker there. If it wasn't a foul, Burundara were in, but it was on Johnston. And so Alison Baker, she's actually been drifting further and further back down the pitch to, to come deep in midfield, and now she's quite sore with a left foot. Might be a, a left leg cramp, in fact, and Chiel's going to come over and help out. A couple of them, it looks like Bedro might even be cramping a little bit as well. Just that heat coming in. The trainers are coming in, dropping everything as he goes um, to the delight of the crowd. Um, but I reckon Taryn Bedro's got a little bit of cramp. It's been a hot day. She's been running very, very hard. Um, yeah, everyone, I think, just needing a little moment to recover. I was just going to say, uh, I think the addition of Johnston into the fold has been really, really dynamic for Borondara. She just looks like she's got that extra yard of pace, that fresh legs. Um, she's willing to take on those bigger defenders and really make them work hard. And, yeah, she's causing a few problems. And I just think if they can flick the ball out to her a couple more times, um, the Borondara midfield, she can certainly create. Well... It's a fairly long break, and it's almost half time and extra time. With the time that's been winding off the clock here, we've actually only got 90, 90 seconds to go. So the impromptu drinks break is coming to an end. We're going to have a short little burst, and then we're going to have the whistle and change ends for 15 more minutes. And I wonder, will the WPL Grand Final go all the way to penalty kicks, or is there one more twist in the tail, one more match-winning goal perhaps? We've had a few false dawns thinking this one was over, Anna, and I think the, the surprises have certainly delighted what's been a pretty big crowd. It's, Cheryl, would you say it's swelled to 500 yet? Yeah, I think it would. There's a lot more pl um, people on the other side, the Cheryl side, as we'll call it, or, or more particularly the east side. Sunny side. <laughs> well, the, Definitely. the shadows are getting longer and longer here and uh, have almost taken about 60% of the ground now. Play finally back underway. Be interesting to see how much stoppage there is at the end of this first half of extra time. Bedro has run off that cramp. She's back on the pitch. And Cheel and also Baker. Good to continue. But Baker is labouring here. Cavaretta looking to burst down the right. Land out of her line. Diving at the feet. Did and well. doing very well. Played very well, Frances Land, I think. She's, um, as we said before, she really worked her way into it. And She's not afraid to put her body on the line at all. Lines trying to play the pass here for Feeks. Almost to perfection. Gummer getting back. 
and just got her body in the way. Wins a foul there as she had her ankles tapped by Jade Feeks. And Gummer is sore now. Looks like it might have been an impact injury as she actually hit the ground. She's holding what looks like a, her arm or her wrist here. She's able to bounce back to her feet. Hard to know exactly what's wrong. And the trainer comes out again here. So Alex Gummer is going to need an assessment here at the end of the first half of extra time. Well, they're all out of subs, aren't they? They, they are. I don't think uh, if she's able to get up and run this off, I'm sure that whatever the problem is, she's the sort of player, especially as the captain of the team, that's going to want to just soldier on through it. A couple and of Panadol, that'll do her. Yeah, well, well, Alex Gummer, she's a tough customer. We've seen her cop a couple of good knocks today. and If I had to guess, it's, hand or a, wrist it's or a wrist or of some sort. You hope it's not a break, because that could be game over and it could be down to... 10 players for the rest of the afternoon. Cheryl, did they announce how many minutes of stoppage we've got at the end of this first half of extra time? I haven't heard, to be honest. I'm just racing down to try and see if I can get more information on Alex Gummer. She was holding her right wrist. So, Gummer still being assessed on the sidelines and half time in extra time can't arrive soon enough for both teams, it seems, with cramps and injuries and yet there is still 15 more minutes to go in this match. Johnston playing it out to the right for Gaifer. Eliadis is going to win it on what is the left for South Melbourne instead. Tiff Eliadis. That's a clumsy foul. And it is going to be the first yellow card of the afternoon. Lucy Johnston goes into the book. Hit the woodwork earlier in this first half of extra time and now becomes the first player to get a yellow card. And Anna Harrington, this is a free kick in a very dangerous position. Very dangerous, absolutely. Tiff Aliadis, as we said before, she'll back herself in from most spots to hit the goal, and I reckon she'll back herself in from here. It's perfect spot for a right footer, just get that nice looping high ball, aim for a top corner. Um, I think she'll really have a ping here, Tiff Aliadis. Well, it'll surely be the last kick of the first half of extra time. We've already played two extra minutes, so this would be 105 plus three if Eliadis can score here. Three in the wall. Plenty of players waiting at the right post. Here comes Eliadis trying to curl it to the far post and lands it on the roof of the net. Half the crowd went up, but it's gone over the bar. And Alex Gummer, they've uh, finished the treatment. The fourth official's taking a look at her wrist over there and they're going to wave her back on, it seems. So that's good news for the Burundara Eagles. It's going to be 11 on 11, repeating that they have used all three of their substitutions. And that is half time and extra time. Oh, what a 15 minute period it was. Two goals, one an absolute worldie, one an unfortunate own goal. And FFV team app, don't forget it's the official smartphone app of the FFV and it's used by hundreds of FFV clubs. You can be a member of both the FFV and your own club. And if you are watching, download team app. It's for smartphone and also for tablet and it's for iPhone and Android as well. That whistle gets us started. 15 minutes to go in the Sportsmart Women's Premier League season. The only question is, will we have penalties as well? Here goes Johnston. Square ball. Jacobs looking for Boudreau. And coming across, Pritchard gets it away. Ellis keeps it in the attacking half of the Eagles. Layoff there by Medwin. Back to Ellis. Howes comes through. Wins the ball. Eliadis. It's been good today, but would love a goal. Roaming on the ball here. Baker seems to have shaken off the cramp that affected her so severely at the end of first half of extra time. Cheel now, long ball over the top. Bouncing into the path of Pollock. Little back heel. Dudley Smith takes it. Holding it up. Trying to get past Gummer. She clears it away. Now Medwin to Johnston. Takes a touch, looking out to Cavaretta. The three Tasmanians passing the ball to each other. One, two, three. And now it's Rani Cavaretta trying to find a path through. Deflects Ellis now, moving up. Has got plenty of space to work with here if she can find a way past Baker and does. It's Olivia Ellis to the left byline. Spinning on the ball and then a fresh air kick. Couldn't send it into the area. Did all the hard work and then... The end product wasn't there. Ball cleared out for a throw. She would have been filthy with that, Lavella. She did some fantastic work to get the ball in there. Ran really hard. and Happens to the best of him. Uh, they'll have another chance here, though, Borondara. Medwin back to Ellis. This one's a scoop up and under. It's going to bounce out towards the byline. Boudreau trying to make it work. Under pressure from Pritchard. Those two have been inseparable for most of the second half. Dropped by Land. 
It's loose, and there's a foul. There's a foul on the keeper. I'm not sure it was there. Amy Jackson on the scene, and Francis Land sending heart attacks through the South Melbourne bench. Gets out of jail with a foul, and it's a South Melbourne ball. You can't even drop your concentration for a moment in this game because you'll be penalised. Um, yeah, Burundara had everyone there just ready to pounce on that one when Land dropped it, and a little bit of a get out of jail there for South Melbourne. Flick by Pollock, Gafer backtracking to Lanning. Clears it first time. Into the attacking half. Medwin trying to bring it down under pressure from Lyons and also from Martineau. And it's gone into touch. Over on the right. Ellis now throwing it back in for Burundara. Another throw. They get to move another 15 metres down the park. Really liking that decision. While she was good to sub Callahan. I just feel like it's opened up the game for Burundara. They're starting to get some more attack. Johnston's really opened them up and added some more width. It's giving Cavaretta a bit more space. Jackson's started to find the ball a little bit more. Um, Callahan, to her credit, worked really hard and shut down a lot of moves. But taking that gutsy move of getting rid of the defensive midfielder, I think, is really starting to pay some dividends for Borondara because they're just looking so much more open. They've got more width and they're just looking more dangerous. So free kick to the Eagles. Wide on the left. Jackson to take. Two in the wall. Plenty of players waiting in the box. Jackson swings it in. Gummer with a chance. It's not goal bound though. Howes hooks it away. And it bounces out to the right. Johnston is there. Under pressure from Howes. Gets past her. Cheel is there though. And clears it into touch. Out for a throw. If you could see the ball going to Alex Cheel probably nine times out of ten. She's going to clear it or do the right thing with it. She just knows how to settle her team down. Just three and a half minutes of the 15 played in the second half of extra time here. So... Still plenty of time to go in this one. Level 2-2 on the Jets Fitness scoreboard between the Burundara Eagles and South Melbourne. You just sense if someone's going to get the winner in this um, period of extra time, it's going to be Burundara. They're just looking a little bit more dangerous at the moment. Jackson takes the ball round Baker. Does well. Tried for the 1-2 with Johnston. Cheel there to intercept and clear away. Pollock now leaves it for Baker. Gummer with the header. Johnston. Gummer again. Plays it to Jacobs. And now has got Medwin with a bit of room. Moves it on first time. Gummer. Pollock's down, cramped off the ball. And it's gone into touch. And I wonder, will they stop play here? And the referee has heard the cries from the South Melbourne players. And it's a bad cramp here for Jamie Pollock. She's really hurting here on the sideline. So, again, another impromptu break as Tiff Eliadis helps out. But... Burundara, as you say, Anna, they're starting to look the uh, the stronger team here as time wears on. And Cheryl, we're going to have a sub here, South Melbourne second. We are going to have a sub. We've got, sorry, I need to drop a couple of things. But it's. I think we've been waiting probably a long time for Pollock to get a chance to come off. She's really, really been hurting. But we're going to see Caitlin Gracia come on. That's right. So Jamie Pollock, I think they got absolutely as much as they could out of her. She's run herself into the ground today. It's been fantastic. I think one of the best players on the ground today, Pollock just really worked really hard. We know Amy Jackson's hard to take on. Stretcher's coming out to help her off. Um, but, yeah, she's just been fantastic. The centre of midfield for South Melbourne has been the main reason they've been able to match it today because normally Amy Jackson is just a juggernaut that you cannot stop. But they've managed to keep her in check and create a lot of uh, the play themselves, the South oh. Melbourne mids. And as far as this match sorting itself out, you wonder if this could be a significant factor as you said, Anna. Penalties as well. Well, Burundara have been able to open up the game and attack more in extra time. And now with Pollock leaving the game, even though she was on her last legs, they make a change. Caitlin Greaser comes on. And Jamie Pollock's afternoon is over. They've still got one sub left up the sleeve. I'm not sure unless it's absolutely necessary. We'll see Nat Bradjanovsky or Jasmine Aritzolo today. We hope it's not a worse Proper injury. injury, because she's looking in a lot of pain still. Yeah, well, I mean, the initial reaction was it was a, a bad cramp, but this could be potentially a, a groin strain or a, a hamstring or a thigh strain. We're not 100% sure here, but Jamie Pollock's in a lot of distress, and we hope it, it is just cramp, really. No, she's played so well that yeah, this would be a really sad note to end on if it is actually a, a more significant injury. Anyway, after a significant delay, Caitlin Greaser comes into the grand final, and play is back underway. Six and a half minutes of the second half of extra time ticked by. Medwin attacking down the left for Burundara. Can they catch South Melbourne cold at the restart here? 
Ball has run long and it's gone behind for a goal kick. And Cheryl over on the sidelines. What's the mood of, of both benches now as this game starts to wind its way towards penalty kicks? I think there was a little bit of panic earlier on for Burundara, but to be honest, it looks like it's settled. I think South Melbourne, it's good to see that they've had some substitutions. Sorry, come on. Cheryl, we'll stay with play. Jackson only as far as Howes. Jacobs trying to make ground here to get to the ball and keep it in the attacking half of the Eagles and does. Cavaretta. Feeks is there taking her on. Feeks did well. Putting it out for a Burundara throw. Over on the right. In it comes. Boudreau. Trying to conjure something. Ball bouncing. Past Medwin. Eliadis. First to respond. Clears it away. Long ball over the top. Gummer's there. Fresh legs of Greaser. Going to be chasing her down here. Gummer able to take possession. And that's just confidence. Fantastic from Alex Gummer. If right. she saw, it's certainly not showing. And so the ball's gone into touch and Jamie Pollock is still lying on the stretcher in front of us over here on the outer side of the ground. So that's not a good sign. We'll keep an eye on that as this match wears on. Jacobs back to Tay. Feeks pressing up. Crossfield pass. Gafer has housed there for company, able to get past her. Cavaretta and Eliadis wins the ball. And now Cavaretta coming back in to win it back. Eliadis turns onto the ball, able to keep hold of it. Played to Gafer. 50-50. Lines. Pushes her over. The referee says it's a foul. Yeah, fair enough. It was just a big shove. Um, Gafer really working hard to try and lock things down on that right flank. And she's got plenty to contend with. Uh, Lines just having a bit of a chuckle. She knows that uh, that was a foul. Jacobs. Hoping to get away with it. Crossfield ball to Medwin. Looking for Jackson, can't find her. Cavaretta makes it work. Back to Jackson now. Leaves it for Jacobs again. Burundara working side to side. Greaser comes through, puts it into touch. It's going to be a throw in for Ellis. Now to Boudreau. Playing it back to Jacobs. Ball over the top. It's going to bounce into the path of Ellis. Good control. Can she keep it in at the byline? She can. It's scrambled away by Howes. Boudreau is there. And the referee says it did go behind, I believe. Either that or it's a foul. The ball ended up in the back of the net. Beautiful I... finish at the end, even if the oh, play was dead. Bedros hurt herself here in firing that ball into the net. And just a reminder that Burundara have used all three substitutions. And Taryn Bedro now is going to need some treatment as well. It's really the walking wounded here. Everyone is limping Cramp. to the finish line. And well... Everyone's cramping up. It's a warm day. I'm looking for Jamie Pollock here. Is she still being carried off or she's able to get back on her feet and walk herself around to the sidelines so that's a good sign and I've just been tweeted the official crowd of 625 today Anna Harrington oh, which great is a, numbers. a good turn up here at the Venado Club for the grand final it feels like a full house this afternoon yeah absolutely it's a noisy crowd they've been loving it Taryn Boudreau I don't know if it's cramp or something it looks like cramp the way she's hobbling just off to the side at the moment they're going to sort that out down to a, down a player at the moment though, Borondara. So if South Melbourne are going to strike, now's a good time as Land bombs the ball up, searching for Griezmann. High ball over the top. It's going to bounce into the path of Tay and Lanning, no nonsense. Gets Having none it away. of that. Cleared into touch out for a throw. And they're looking at Boudreau. I'm just going to wave here at uh, one of the officials and check whether it's five subs or three in the grand final. It is five. They get... They do get a couple more if they need them. So Sarah Petty is in the vest, waiting to come on. Taryn Boudreau back into the game. <laughs> Thrown down the line by Martineau. Eliadis. White on the right. Gummer's there. Into touch. South Melbourne. Rare attacking 4A here in extra time. Well, they've got the extra player at the moment. And they're going to get Martineau over to take the throw. Boudreaux's come back on. I think they really wanted to take a penalty, so they don't want to sub her out. No. Ball cleared into touch again. It's level with the penalty area. And again, the game just hits a bit of an awkward lull here. Still plenty of time to go. Four minutes until the end of the 120. And there will, again, surely be stoppage time at the end of this second half of extra time due to all the delays with the cramps and the injuries. Medwin. Clearance Falcon. deflected off Greaser. Deflected kindly for South Melbourne's cause. Cheel. Passes it straight to Medwin. Overhead kick there from 
Baker. Ellis. Pickpocketed by Martin O, but it's going to work out for Burundara. Jackson, crowd rises, playing it through. Johnston, one-on-one -on -one with Cheel, and Cheel wins out. Won't go behind for a corner either. Well played by Land. Getting there before really the well. byline. Puts it out for a throw. Cheel and Land both did really well there. Um, Cheel just managing to work the ball away. and Plenty of time Land. here for Ellis to pick a cross into the area. Cheel read it better in the air. Ball not out of danger just yet. Cleared away, though. Pritchard getting it out to the left, and... It's gone over the line for a throw. Gummer leaving it for Ellis. Both teams surely now thinking about penalty takers. There'll be more than a few reluctant takers, I'm sure, here. Two very young teams. At least beyond the first five, maybe. Yeah, there are some, uh, you think, they'd be hoping to get it done in the five because both teams have some really cool, calm heads. Though a few of South Melbourne's have come off. And we've got a foul here. Not sure which way it's going, actually. It's going Burundara's way. Amy Jackson didn't think it was because she started running the other way. No, so now she'll happily take this one. Again, free kick too far out for a shot. And time running down. There's just two minutes plus stoppage to go now. A goal here would win the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final, surely. Amy Jackson on the left. Plenty of numbers committed forward for Burundara. They know this is the chance to avoid the lottery of spot kicks. Two in the wall. Here it comes from Jackson. It's a scramble in the six-yard area! And it's disallowed. Bedreau thought she'd won it. She was peeling away to celebrate. And it won't count. Not sure what it was for, to be honest. Might have been a handball or a foul or offside, but that's a little bit of a mystery to me, that one. It doesn't count. Including disallowed. Taryn Bedreau's put it in the back of the net four times. Well... Including two disallowed. Agonisingly close to the match winner, and now they get free another kick. chance. Another free kick, and this one only metres outside the area, and another player has gone down with cramp here. Um, no, it's not Alice. It's, it, um, it looks as though Johnston. it's one of the subs, Johnston, who actually came on. This might not be cramp. This might be an injury, because she did come on quite late in the piece. Bounces back to her feet, and now... With the game ticking beyond 120 minutes almost, we're into the final minute of the 120. And again, like at the end of regular time, Amy Jackson, the chance to win the match. Four in the wall for South Melbourne. And Francis Land has got to contend with looking into the sun a little bit here as well. This would be the perfect full stop on the season. Burundara with the chance to win it right here. Amy Jackson over the free kick. This is it to win it. Jackson curling it into the woodwork. And Boudreau can't finish the follow-up. It goes over the bar. And surely the game is destined for penalties now with just 10 seconds of the 120 to go. Wow. That was so, so close to being the match winner. Bounced off the woodwork. And Boudreau, nine times out of ten, she would have kept it low enough to finish. But it's just blazed over the bar that time. South Melbourne, one last roll of the dice tower. Dudley Smith has Greaser here ahead of the ball. It's the fresh legs of Caitlin Greaser. Ellis has slipped, but she got a vital touch on it. Takes it out to the byline, and Lanning was a long way from goal. Didn't want to put it out. Greaser back into the area looking for Feeks. It's cleared away by Tay. The 120's up. We're into extra time of extra time here. And the ball takes a deflection. Just two minutes of extras to go. Burundara so close, hitting the bar again. And Boudreau couldn't net the follow-up. We'll cross down to Cheryl at the next break and play, but South Melbourne are alive here. Baker trying to find a way through, headed away by Gafer. Now out to the left, Eliadis cutting onto her right foot, thinking about a long shot, and it doesn't dip in time. Cheryl Downs, a mad finish to extra time, and Burundara agonisingly close to winning it. Absolutely, and I think South Melbourne very, very hopeful from there. Maybe it, if we come to penalties, which it looks like we probably will, they might go out there with a the more positive outlook because they've made it this far. They've done so much better than their previous matches. 2-2, two -two. and we've now played a minute of extras, and it's going to be a Burundara free yeah. kick. And Ellis is streaming forward here, trying to provide some support in numbers. Boudreau takes control, trying to poke a shot and catch Land out again. She's wise to the danger this time, and it wasn't a... Vicious shot by any means. Land clearing up to halfway. Still time for either team if they're good enough. Burundara with a chance here. Jackson trying to find Boudreau. 
Land comes out. Feet save. Flag was up. Offside. And the assistant referees had a lot of work to do in this second half of extra time. And so with the two minutes at the end of the 120 ticking over, this might be it. Penalties looming to decide the WPL Grand Final. Really has been impossible to call for so much of the day. Burundara hoping to try and find a way through. Jackson out to the left. Medwin's there. Martino battling, wins back possession. Just kicks to clear. Now Greaser flicking it over the top. Gummer backtracking. Trying to get the ball in her control and does and wins a foul as well. Greaser a bit should too overzealous. Time. That should be time, you'd think. Well, we've played 30 seconds beyond the recommended amount of stoppage and indeed there it is. It's going to be penalties to decide the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final. We hope you're enjoying it on FFV Team App. The match has really had it all, Anna Harrington. We've been treated to a spectacular display of football this afternoon. And it is a little bit sad that we couldn't find a match-winning goal, but in a sense, perhaps it's fitting that a game that's penalties to decide the Sportsmart WPL Grand Final. Crowd congregating behind the goal at the left of screen. It's Jacobs to take it right-footed and scores. High to the right, Land went the right way, couldn't get the reach, it's 1-0 Burundara. Yeah, nice penalty, uh, there was no way Land was going to get near that, just had her composed nicely, Jacobs vindicated while she was the first taker. It's going to be Tiffany Eliadis. And uh, Cheryl, if we've got you, call it Eliadis, which way will she go? <laughs> no pressure on me, I'm picking that she'll go top right. Okay, thank you Cheryl, we'll stay with you throughout this penalty shootout. Eliadis just checking both the boots are done up here as she steps up to take the second penalty of the shootout been very good in the 120 but couldn't find the back of the net she's got to right here Eliadis taking on Lanning here it comes right footed again and scores Mid midway up and that one was just about unsavable left of the next he left hand post yeah Anna Lanning was going the other way the whole time and there was no way she was going to be able to cut back for that nice penalty from Eliadis um, went for a pretty safe option that you know that lower one that you know will score most of the time here comes Alex coming out next taker for the Burundara Eagles we saw her go off with that hand injury during extra time but she's all right now Hush falls over the crowd here comes Gummer and it's saved by Land. She went down the middle. It was not a firmly hit penalty. And Francis Land gets down and saves. And Alex Gummer can't believe it. It's still 1-1. And South Melbourne have their kick in hand. Alex Gummer's absolutely shattered there. Um, as you said, Tao went down the middle. And it was, it was yeah, just not the best option. Made it easy for Land. And well, Taryn Pedro getting across to lend some support. Gummer. Yeah, Brittany Dudley-Smith up next. And this is to give South Melbourne the lead after two kicks each. It's 1-1. And Dudley Smith had such a barnstorming end to the season. Very nearly caught Amy Jackson in the gold medal race. She's had a sensational year. Here comes Dudley Smith and scores down the middle. It's 2-1 South Melbourne. And they're in front in the shootout. Yeah, it's just clinical from Dudley Smith. Um, yeah, Lanning couldn't really do too much with that one. Um, you know, there's a reason why she's one of the top scorers in the league. Her and Eliadis just both precise with uh, those finishes. So all the pressure on Taryn Boudreau here. We saw a cramp at the end of extra time affecting her, but they didn't want to sub her off. They wanted her right here to take a penalty kick. And all the pressure on her here. Burundara, 2-1 down. Boudreau taking her time. Here it comes. And she scores just out of the reach of Land, who did go the right way, but it's 2-2. Two -two, and Boudreau brings the match back on level terms. Absolutely. Um Reassuring there for Borondara, it means that South Melbourne do have to continue to score to, to maintain this advantage. It just puts a little bit of pressure back on them, even though they've got the lead. Cheryl, can Lanning pull off a save here against Alison Baker? I think what we've seen is Anna Lanning has just got so much confidence in there, so I, I think she'll be right up for it. So it's Baker now to take for South Melbourne to put them back in front, 3-2. Lanning waiting in goal. Crowd oh, silent for the penalty kicks. There's an eerie feeling as... Baker scores. It actually went underneath the net there. A little bit misleading, I'm sure, for the fans on the other side of the ground. But it does count. And Baker makes it 3-2 to South Melbourne after three kicks each. And now all the pressure on Ellis here because a miss here would make it match point for South Melbourne. Olivia Ellis has been excellent in this match and was still full of running at the end. But it's all about one kick now to keep her team in the grand final. Jumping up and down on the spot. 
Here comes Ellis, scores to the bottom left, and it's 3-3. Yeah, perfectly taken penalty, exactly what you want to see. Um, just slotted it into the corner, no worries. It's a pretty safe option like what Eliadis did, and you know most of the time, keeper's not going to be able to save it. So it's level again, but South Melbourne shooting second. They've got this kick to make it 4-3 now. Safri Lines is up. Lanning waiting in goal. Hasn't been too close to any of the kicks so far. Here comes the shot. And it's in. Put it midway up to the left and Lines makes it 4-3. And now it is match point. South Melbourne. And all the pressure on Jess Tay here. She must score to keep the shootout going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Lanning's not really got too close to any of uh, the penalties there. That was probably the closest she'd gotten. It still um, just got past her reach. Here it is. Jess Tay must score to keep Burundara in the shootout. Land waiting in goal. It's Tay. And she scores down the middle. A good penalty. Land left flat-footed. And now South Melbourne looking around, saying who's taking it next. And it's going to be Francis Land, the goalkeeper, to win it in the shootout. 4-4. But this is the tenth and final kick of the first five. Keeper versus keeper. Francis Land to win the grand final. And it's saved by Ladding. And the shootout continues. It was not a good penalty, straight down the middle. And Lanning may not have held the save, but it didn't matter because it bobbled forward and it stayed out. And Alex Gummer, I think, just breathed the biggest sigh of relief because knowing her sort of personality, she'd have been kicking herself for missing one before. But Land, yeah, just an odd penalty. Just put it straight down the middle and Lanning was almost just surprised that it landed in her And there chest. was confusion among the South Melbourne huddle because they didn't know that Land was taking. Amazing. Cavaretta now. Must score. Must keep the pressure on for Burundara. Land. Oh, Cavaretta blazes it over. And it's match point once again for South Melbourne. And Francis Land, after missing the penalty, stares down Rani Cavaretta. And Alex Cheel has the chance to win the grand final for South Melbourne. And I think Alex Cheel will win the grand final for South Melbourne. As I said, she's, she's a fantastic captain. She's had a great game today. And... Uh, You'd back her in from here. She'll uh, be very confident, I think, back herself in to steer this pass, Anna Lanning. Still 4-4. Cheel to win it now for South Melbourne. Their second chance to win the grand final. Alex Cheel scores! And South Melbourne are the Sportsmart Women's Premier League winners in 2015. Alex Cheel does it. A low penalty to the right. Out of the reach of Lanning. Back to back. And they leave as champions. What a fantastic effort from South Melbourne. Everyone probably would have written them off. Burundara, the red hot well, favourites. They found a way, despite being down early, to get the game back on their terms, work it in, take it to extra time, and then a gutsy, gutsy penalties effort there. Alex Cheel, an inspirational skipper, and a deserved two-time championship captain, back to back. Well, let's uh, see if we can get Cheryl Downs out there for a quick word with one of the players before we sign off on our live stream this afternoon. Make sure you check the Sportsmart WPL social media pages for more post-match reaction. But uh, Anna Harrington, a heartbreak for Burundara, an elation for South Melbourne, the lottery of penalties. But they prevail in the end. They held their nerve, and, and that really is a, a crazy finish to what has been a very entertaining grand final. Yeah, the penalties almost kind of reflected the game, and it looked like one team was going to get the edge, and then another. Gentlemen, thank you once again for coming to the 2015 Sportsmart Women's Premier League Grand Final. My name is Liam Bentley from FFE. I'm joined up here by a number of special guests. Uh, Jared Woods, who is the major sponsor of the Sportsmart w, uh, WPL, and thank you very much, Jared, for your ongoing support of women's football and football in general in Victoria. <laughs> I'm also joined by FFE President Kim Antalya Doris, FFE Board Directors Tal Karp and Nick Ciaris, and of course, Teresa Dees. So, first of all, I would like. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank our match officials who make this thing possible as well. Um, so if I could get Daniel Anderson, Kate Jasovitz, Eliska Jospovic, Jasmine Steger, my apologies for that. And 
Thank you, right. Theresa Days to present the best on ground for today. And that goes to, from South Melbourne Women's, number 12, Jamie Pollard! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it was a grand final for the ages. Extra time, penalties, I had the lot. It was the current holders versus every, a team that had taken everything else in their path. And I think Burundara Eagles have been outstanding on the field this year. And I think a round of applause for the achievements of minor premiership, Team Adam Cup, and getting to the grand final. has no means to be whatsoever. So I'd like to call up, starting with number one, Anna Lanning. Alex Gummer. Jess Tate. Sky Jensen. Ash Callahan. Amy Jackson. Sarah Jacobs. Olivia Ellis. Alicia Newman, double goal scorer Taryn Boudreau, Rani Calvareta, <laughs> Ali Gaffer, Lucy Johnston, <laughs> Amy Medwin, <laughs> Keo Kujimia, And Sarah Petty. And of course it couldn't be done without the coaching staff and background staff of Marvin Sognang, Mick Gaffer, Manny Catrullis, and of course coach of the year Sean Ontong. South Melbourne firstly uh, and a very um, exciting final and I think well deserved winners um, so overall thank you very much South uh, and just quickly to um, everyone at my club I'm uh, a very proud and honoured coach to be able to um, coach at a, such a wonderful club that's run so well and a fantastic group of players that have um, been nothing but a uh, very special to work with, okay? So thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Sean. A fantastic performance in 2015 by the Eagles. But that does lead us to our champions for 2015, South Melbourne Women! <laughs> Starting with goalkeeper Francis Lan. Brittany Dudley Smith. Jesse Pritchard. Natalie Martineau. Carol Howes. Tiffany Eliaris. Safri Lines. Best on ground for today, Jamie Pollard. Lisa Farquhar. Alison Baker. Jade Feeks. Natalie Brajanowski. Caitlin Grazer.
Jasmine Arezzolo. Coco Maestorovic. And of course, Alex Chill. Well, pretty speechless right now. To go back to back is an amazing achievement and one of the goals we've had all season. But first of all, I'd just like to thank the Burundara girls. It sure was a battle today and you really, really gave it your best shot and we are both fighting for it. It could have been either way. So it was a really great final to give to the crowd. And well done, you've done really well all season. You've been terriers, so good effort. To my girls, we had our challenges this season, we had our ups and downs, but after, in the end of the day, South family prevails, so well done, good effort. To the coaching staff, we've been there from day one, Sock, Jorge, Bullent, Stuart, Gabby, Rolf, anyone else I may have forgotten, um, you've really helped us get through and we couldn't have done it without you, honestly, always pushing us to be better and achieve more and be more intense at training and it's just amazing so thanks for being there. <laughs> to our sponsors PDG and Malcorp, um, couldn't have done it without the sponsorship and but yeah it's awesome to get some money behind us and support the women's football it's uh, really really great to promote promote women's football especially with the NPL coming through so thanks to our sponsors and to our crowd Thank you very much. Big clap to the crowd. Day one in the rain, two degrees, and in the heat, 20 degrees. You've been there for us, so thanks a lot. And go South, back to back. Well, and to the FFB and Sportsmart, thanks. Of course, it can be done, and Alex said uh, as much yourself without the backroom staff. So, Lauren Ferruja, Rolf Schroeder, Georgie Leon, Jorge Leon, my apologies, it's the accent, and of course, head coach Socrates Nicolaides. Sean and his team. Um, Sean's brought a, a, a high level of professionalism into the game and I think it shows in the way you guys played and performed all year. You set a benchmark for the rest of us, so congratulations. I want to thank our girls, all our supporters. As Chill said, we had some challenges at the start of the year with some, some family members passing away, so it put a lot of pressure on us. But I think we prevail. Um, obviously, we're trying to improve the w women's football. And I think with teams and clubs like this, if we keep playing this way, we're going to encourage more and more girls to play football. So to all you guys up there, thank you. Sportsmark WPL Champion, Sir Melbourne Rumble!